of Kentucky. Both teams with three wins in the month of September. Well, in recent years, Steve Spurrier has dominated games that he has coached against the Kentucky Wildcats. To put it bluntly, he has owned the Kentucky Wildcats. With more on that, let's go down to the field and Todd Harris. Todd? Well, Eric, the moment you land in the Bluegrass State, the spirit of Southern hospitality greets you like the smell of a warm biscuit. Unless your name happens to be Spurrier, as in Coach Steve Spurrier. You see, he has not been a very welcome guest or hospitable host when it comes to playing football against the Kentucky Wildcats. He is 13-0 since 1990. But just beating the Cats is not what has Kentucky fans so hot under the collar when the visor-clad Spurrier is on the sideline. It's the way in which he beat the Cats, hanging 73, 65, and 55 points on them in a four-year span. So to put it bluntly, if the Spurrier beatdowns continue tonight, he may want to make a quick exit back south. Eric? Thank you so much, Todd. Well, in 1966, that man won a Heisman Trophy. 1989, my partner, Andre, you won a Heisman Trophy. You're probably in a position perfect position to break this down. He's got a quarterback like he's never had before in Savelle Newton. Yeah, it really does. He's got a guy that isn't the classic pocket passer that you look for from a Steve Spurrier coached quarterback. He's a guy that can really put pressure on a defense by escaping outside. They've had some offensive line problems. That's part of the reason why he was moved back to quarterback. But he can make plays with his legs and on the move puts tremendous pressure on him once he gets outside the pocket. And that segues us perfectly into our impact players. We've talked about Savell Newton. He's got weapons to spare on the outside. Yeah, Sidney Rice, we mentioned him, as well as Ken Kenny McKinley, who had a breakout performance last year. They complement one another. No longer can you double-team one side of the field with Sidney Rice. Now you have to play the entire field defensively because they've got two magical wide receivers in that South Carolina passing game. Now South Carolina on the year. Averaging 20 points per game, but it has been on an up spike in recent weeks ever since Savelle Newton took over for Blake Mitchell in Game 3. And you walk around this campus and this community and you get the sense that Kentucky, they are getting tired of Steve Spurrier and the way he has just <laughs> dominated against their Wildcats. Yeah, you'd get tired too if the guy, every time he came to town, he hung a half a bill on you. So <laughs> you'd get a little sick of it too. I, you know, I look for a good, good ball game here today. Both offenses should put up plenty of points. It'll be exciting. Kentucky can match South Carolina point for point. And if you like offensive football, stay tuned because this should be a good one. Tim Masty will kick the ball off for the Kentucky Wildcats. South Carolina, it will start on offense. Kick is to the goal line. Captain Mutterland, a lot of speed. Freshman can't get to the 20-yard line. He is brought down rudely by a gaggle of three defenders for the Kentucky Wildcats. Well, South Carolina, they call this offense the cock and fire. They're averaging 20 points per game. They have good skill position players, but Andre, it's the offensive line that's been the issue. Yeah, it really has. Starting true freshman at a left at left tackle, Hutch Eckerson, and right guard Garrett Anderson, who is also a true freshman. Look for a lot of pressure up front from this Kentucky defense. Going to test those true freshmen early and often in this football game. There is Savelle Newton, senior from Wallace, South Carolina. Eight touchdown passes, just two interceptions. From the shotgun, hands to Corey Boyd, and Boyd with running room. Big gainer on first down, 13 yards for the junior. Defensively for the Kentucky Wildcats, the positive, well, they lead the entire country in fumbles forced. The negative, they're last in the SEC in yards and points given up. The defensive line, they're going to be tested today. Yeah, 113th against the run in the country this year. Lamar Mills, he's the captain, of the, one of the captains of this football team. He'll have to have a big game defensively if Kentucky's going to stay in this one. Sidney Rice, Kenny McKinley in the game left side. Receiver-wise for Savelle Newton, who decides to call his own number. And on the keeper, good game for Newton. Pickup of six yards. 
Well, you're going to see him do that more and more, and you're not used to that from a, a Steve Spurrier coached quarterback, a guy that can really make plays with his legs. We're used to seeing a guy that basically stands back in the pocket, read things out, and, and operates from within the structure. And, you know, it's, it's a little different, but I always say a good coach and a good sign of a good coach is he's able to adapt to the talent of the football team. And once again, Steve Spurrier does it. Mo Brown goes in motion from the right side to the left. Rice or Newton, his first pass of the game to Mo Brown. And Brown is swarmed and brought down. Shamari Moore, the nickelback, brings the, the stop, and it's now a third down. There is Rich Brooks, now in his fourth season with the Kentucky Wildcats. 12 wins to go with 27 losses. I really believe he's got things pointed in the right direction, is having some success recruiting, especially here in the state of Kentucky. And uh, you know, the sell he's given recruits is, hey, if you come in early, you can play here at, uh, at the University of Kentucky. So they play a lot of youngsters. And come in, get your feet wet early. Third down and two. Boyd with the football. And Boyd's going to be close. Not sure if he got it. Joe well, Schuller. I think he's going to be just short. It's going to be fourth and about an inch. And so Steve Spurrier getting his offense to the line of scrimmage in a hurry. Going to try to quick count Kentucky. You see it here. Just nice, tremendous push. Good job by Joel Schuler of collapsing things down. On fourth and inches, it's a keeper, and Newton's going to be close. Andre, your thoughts on that decision just in this first possession of the game? That's my favorite play. You know, a quarterback sneak. Don't waste any time trying with the ball handling, trying to hand it off to a running back deep and allow for penetration. If you're going to go for it, just lunge your quarterback in there and pick up the first down. That's exactly what Steve Spurrier does in this situation. So a lot of people may be a dangerous decision, but for Steve Spurrier, he's going to do it every single time. Oh, absolutely. They get the first down, so they're cooking. South Carolina, 3-2 on the year. 1-2 in the SEC East. Lost to both Georgia and Auburn. Newton to throw. Throws deep passes, bobbled and incomplete. Almost with the interception, Marcus McClinton. Yeah, and that's their big time player in the secondary. He's forced four fumbles this year, two interceptions already. And the thing that you talk to coaches here, Mike Archer, their defensive coordinator, he says he's always thinking about the big play. Right here, he has a chance to make one. Savelle Newton overthrows Keenan McKinley. And boy, yeah, that's a gift wrap right there. That's Christmas early in October, Eric. McClinton leads the team in interceptions with two that should have been three Newton to throw again pump fake throws late complete to Mo Brown who is wrapped and brought down Jamari Moore another tackle but a pickup of four yards. And a good job by Savelle Newton of sorting things out. That was actually a second progression in that pass play. Came down, checked it down outside. And I'll tell you what, right now Kentucky playing with a lot of emotions. Want to get them in third down and long situations. You know, here it's third down and five, third and medium. But they can live in this situation. Now they've got to get themselves off the field defensively. Eighth play of this drive coming up for the game cop. on the run. Pass is complete to McKinley. And McKinley, the first down and more, gets it out to the 40-yard line. Pickup of 13. He had a fantastic game a week ago against Auburn, and he keeps on keeping on this week. Boy, they got the matchup they wanted. They put Kenny, Kenny McKinley in the slot and got him matched up on a defensive lineman. And Dominic Lewis, who moved to a defensive end from running back when he first got to Kentucky. But, boy, I'll tell you what, get me matched up on a defensive end. I bet you I can get open. Too easy for the Cox. Newton to throw again. Under pressure. Gets it off. Complete to Brown. And Brown, a pickup of three yards. Again, more with the stop. Well, I tell you, Savelle Newton stood in there the last possible second. Sidney Rice took a little bit too long of uh, running his route. And his quarterback's trying to wait it out, wait it out. Now, go to the second progression. And that's the big shot that he took from Dominic Lewis, the right defensive end for this Kentucky football team. Still operating out of the no-huddle offense. Well, 
I'll tell you, right now, Steve Spurrier, he's doing that because he's got personnel on the field that he likes, getting the matchups he likes. Boyd, another carry. And Boyd is wrapped and dropped at the 35-yard line. Always go, when you go no huddle like this with a, a football team like Steve Spurrier, he's looking for matchups. Always looking to exploit a matchup. You talked earlier about Kenny McKinley getting matched up on the defensive end. Dominic Lewis in the slot position. Well-thrown football by Savelle Newton. There, if you walk your linebackers outside, try to get better zone drops from inside out, he'll just hand the football off to Corey Boyd because there's better blocking angles from the offensive line up front. And again, doing a lot of movement, but not your formal huddle. And as well, to throw all that in the pot and mix it up, get your little gumbo in Kentucky, <laughs> you, know, you can't change personnel. You've got the personnel on the field that you want. Bunch here. I tell you what, this may be four down territory for Coach Spurrier. That's, I think that's why he called the timeout was to explain, look, you don't have to get it all, get a little bit on third down, and we're in a situation where we can cash in on fourth down. They need to get to the 30-yard line. Newton out of the gun. Got a little blitz here. Here they come. Newton breaks out. He's got the first down and more. Oh, a little awkward slide. Not used to doing that. He gets down, but not after a big gainer. He picks up 17 yards. I tell you, we're not used to seeing it from Spurrier coach football teams, but Coach Spurrier's not used to this element in the offense right here. It breaks down. It get, they get blitz. They pick it up, and then all of a sudden, everything opens up. Parts in front of Savelle Newton, and he steps up. The playmaker he is steps up and makes a play for his football team. Boy, that is an added weapon to an already loaded Steve Spurrier offense. I don't remember uh, Danny Warfel doing that too no. frequently. <laughs> Not a whole lot of Florida quarterbacks uh, could do that with their legs for Coach Spurrier. Leonard Stafford, the fullback in the game in front of Corey Boyd. They give to Boyd. Junior bounces off tackle and refusing to go down. You see that Kentucky defense always looking for the turnover, trying to rip it out. Yeah, pick Wesley, up a five. Wesley Wood Woodyard, their uh, leading tackler in there trying to rip that football out. He's their team leader. Led them last year in tackles with 100 tackles on the season. He is a tremendous player. They all look to him for the leadership on that side of the football. Kids just a junior. Got one more year, and he's a tremendous talent. Boyd with four carries, 20 yards on this opening drive. Again, Newton. Marking out the orders at the line. Fifth carry for Boyd. Got a flag here. Well, you got to be impressed, though, with Savelle Newton and his ability. You know, that started this season as a wide receiver. Four weeks ago, he was running routes, catching passes, has 10 receptions for 70 yards on the season. But then to his ability to adapt, drop back the drop back system that uh, Steve Spurrier has. Offside, defense, number nine, five-yard penalty. That's enough for a first down. And, and then to pick up signals in the terminology to go along with that, boy, he's a cerebral player that really can, can you know, operate within the structure of the offense as well as make plays when things break down. That penalty called on Darrell White, senior from Middlesboro, Kentucky. Yeah, well, only one, one of two seniors, one of three seniors on this defense. Two that play often, Lamar Mills, and they got Carl Booker out at corner as well, a former walk-on. Very young defense for Kentucky. First and goal. They want to throw the fade to Rice. And he's out of the end zone. Incomplete good coverage by the senior, Carl Booker. Well, we talked about his leaping ability. They tried to go to him last week against Auburn in situations like this. Just try to throw him one where he can go up and get it. Right there, you got to leave the quarterback four yards. I always preach that every week. Four yards so you can be so the quarterback can fade you out of bounds. If you squeeze it, you can't come down with that football. It was a well-thrown ball. Just leave uh, Savelle Newton a little more room along the sideline. This has been a trouble spot for the Gamecocks all season long. The red zone. A week ago, that really caused them a lot of damage. They were just one for four in scoring opportunities in the red zone against Auburn. A big reason why they lost. Second and goal. Newton. Pushed out of bounds. 
good coverage defensively by the Wildcats. Darrell White pushes him out of bounds. Well, with all the success that they've had on offense early in this football game, you got to chalk that one up for Kentucky as a small win within this big realm of, of, uh, of football game that we have left. Small wins, a bunch of those equate to a win at the end of the football game. If you're able to hold South Carolina to a field goal attempt in this type of situation, with the way they've moved the football, you got to feel pretty good about yourself if you're Kentucky. South Carolina two for three on third downs so far in this drive. And Newton again has to call a timeout. Well, Steve Spurrier is all, he's upset. He didn't like the formation. Somebody actually lined up Whiteside, the wide receiver, Noah Whiteside. I hadn't played a whole bunch this year, but you expected when you're getting the football game to know where to line up. I mean, he is giving it to him. <laughs> well, it is an odd marriage between Steve Spurrier and his quarterback, Savelle Newton. For more on that, Todd, what do you have? Yeah, no kidding. On the campus, Eric, they're known as the odd couple. And it's no mystery. Steve Spurrier prefers a drop back pocket passing quarterback. That's what he was, and that's what he's coached. Anthony Dillwood, who you mentioned, Danny Werfel, Rex Grossman, very similar to the type of quarterback Heisman Trophy winner Steve Spurrier was down to the haircut. Now, along comes Seville Newton, a former wideout who never met a run he didn't like. He runs the long braided hair under skull cap, not very Spurrier esque. Newton knows he's not a prototypical Spurrier quarterback, and even though he's not one of the six players selected by the coach to grace the cover, of the 2006 media guide. Newton says he has full confidence in what his coach is trying to accomplish as long as South Carolina wins. Mission accomplished for Newton. Yeah, you know what's impressed me about that whole relationship and situation? Steve Spurrier's ability to adapt to college football and the way it's being played now. Players are bigger, stronger, faster. You know, maybe the days are gone for the classic drop back passer. You see more and more around college football guys that can pass as well as run the football and put pressure on a defense with their legs. You know, it may be what Steve Spurrier from this day on, he goes out and recruits that type of athlete to play his position at quarterback. Third down and goal. Newton flushed out left side. Throws. Intercepted at the goal line. Samari Moore with the pick. And the ball goes over to the Wildcats. One thing about playing the position of quarterback when you're faced with a lot of zone coverage, it takes tremendous patience. And that's what Steve Spurrier is telling his quarterback right there. You have to take what the defense is giving you and not force passes. You see the coverage there. Tremendous coverage by, on the part of the Kentucky Wildcats. A lot of blue jerseys. That one just hung up. Kenny McKinley he was trying to get the football to him. But a tremendous play by Samari Moore. And now Kentucky trying to quick snap and catch South Carolina off guard. And it doesn't work. They huddle up quickly, broke the huddle, and went to the line. And South Carolina was still rushing their defenders out there. Yeah, and trying to quick count them, you know, maybe catch a, a, a defender or two out of position, maybe pop a run through there. A situation like this, Eric, I always like to formation the defense to where you get one-on-one -on -one coverage on the outside and drop back and take a shot. You, you, you may get pass interference, which gives you some breathing room, or you come up with a big play down the field that provides that breathing room that you're looking for. There is Shamari Moore with that interception. Tony Dixon, Maurice Grinter backs behind. Andre Woodson, Jr. from nearby Radcliffe, Kentucky. And movement on the line. We're going to have a flag fly. It looks like it's Gary Williams, the left tackle for Kentucky. They have flinched a little bit. Before the snap, ball start. Offense, number 79. Half the distance to the goal. It remains second down. Making the call, our referee, Jeff Roberson, his SEC crew. We're here in Lexington, Kentucky, the Bluegrass State Commonwealth Stadium is our venue. Alongside Andre Ware, I am Eric Collins, Todd Harris working the sidelines. Second down and 10 for the Wildcats. First time with the football. Woodson rolls, throws, passes complete to Grinter. And the fullback lowers his head. And gets a first down for the cat. And he got what he was looking for. Just a little room to breathe and execute the offense. 
and get your back away from the goal line. You see the play fake may have taken a little bit too long there. Get in it, get out. Now the football's coming out as soon as you turn your shoulders and eyes down the field and finds the big fella, Maurice Grinner. Here come the Kentucky Wildcats. For Grinter, that's his first catch of the season. So they obviously trust the freshman close to their own goal line. Tony Dixon, alone back behind Woodson. Dixon may have bottled the handoff. He's dropped red to the line of scrimmage. Now let's check with Linda Cohn for a Sports Center in-game update. Wow. And well, it's definitely the best lineup since Murder's Row if they're Mr. starting Alex Rodriguez Mr. in the eighth Stein, spot. Mr. Steinbrenner cannot be happy right about now. Wow. What a season for the Tigers. Raphael Little and Tony Dixon, two good running backs, both in the game, but they want to pass. Pass is complete left side. Demorio Ford with his first catch. Take a look at the impact players for the Kentucky Wildcats. Talk about Woodson, Burton, and Little, three guys that are all over the SEC's leaderboard for all-purpose yards. Yeah, Woodson having a tremendous season, but Keenan Burton has provided the spark that they need in the passing game on the outside. Was injured uh, most of the last two seasons, but boy, has he really asserted himself into this Kentucky Wildcat lineup. Yeah, they think he's a big reason why Andre Woodson is putting up numbers this year. Oh, yeah. Third and three. Woodson escapes the first man and the second. Takes it himself and dives for the first down. Man, he's a good athlete for a big fella. 6'5", 232, but he can, he can move around that pocket. Boy, I'll tell you what, he, he can pull it down. Last year he may have did, done that a little bit too much, but you watch the eyes here, always looking down the field, still looking for a receiver. Now it's time to tuck it, get the first down. He is, you mentioned it, a tremendous athlete with a big-time arm. He's the best that I've seen in college football that I've laid my eyes on personally this football season. That is heavy praise. Tony Dixon. And Dixon across the 25 to the 27. Well, Kentucky offensively, they average 30 points per game, third best in the SEC, but they've had a lot of movement up front on that offensive line. Yeah, Jason Leger's a guy that's going to start at right guard for them. Two games ago, he was on the defensive side of the football playing defensive tackle, and tonight he may have to swap over and provide a little depth on that side of the football because they're a little thin along the defensive line. And they already say that Leger is their best offensive line. Yeah, big compliment for a guy two weeks into it. Second down at six. Woodson looks to the sideline. Quick pass, complete to Burton. Burton's first catch brings him up to the 39-yard line. Pick up of 12 yards with South Carolina defensively. They are normally stout against the pass, but they have trouble against the run. The defensive line today will be key. Yeah, 97th against the run, and we talk about Pepper, Brinkley, uh, Doty, and Brown along that front. They'll be tested and tested as this ball game progresses. Kentucky will wear you down with the passing game, and late in the football game, they have the lead. Look for them to start running the football with Raphael Little and Tony Dixon against that front four of South Carolina. Coach Spurrier wants an explanation. I maybe thought that uh, Keenan Burton's knee was down when he caught that football, and Spurrier's wanting to... Wanting to explain to him. What a big time talent. Played as a true freshman in two games. And uh, was injured, injured his foot last year, which sidelined him and a finger the year before. But he's bounced back. Four receivers in the game for the Wildcats. Woodson. Dangerous pass, almost intercepted by Fred Bennett, probably their best cornerback. Yeah, he's a guy that a lot of pro scouts like. He may be a first-day first, first day guy, 6'1", out there playing corner. Scouts like his size and his speed. And I'll tell you, Andre Woodson, a little bit late. He had, this, had his receiver. Just a little bit late getting to it. But boy, is he fundamentally sound. 
Dirk balls up around that shoulder right behind the ear and he just whips it out of there. Again on the run, pass is complete. Curtis Pulley, his first catch of the game and the backup quarterback showing off his athleticism and picks up a first down and a gain of 14. Now let's go back to the studio and Linda Cohn. Thanks, Eric. This update presented by Taco Bell, Maryland, Georgia Tech. What a finish to this one. Down by four, Maryland, Sam Hollenbach hitting Darius Hayward Bay. And he will get it inside the 10-yard line. Remember the Terps down by four. Unbelievable. And then last chance, fourth and six, Hollenbach. Uh-oh, sacked by Michael Johnson. Georgia Tech hangs on, wins its fifth straight. Thank you, Linda. Things are coming fast and furious here in Lexington. Both teams going with an no huddle offense. It's time to give to Raphael Little. And Little is dropped close to the line of scrimmage. Well, he's a guy fast, good in between the tackles runner. Not big, but he can run inside. He's got great speed once he gets to the edge or gets to the second level of the defense. And they'll spell him every now and then with Tony Dixon. We'll see him. He's got more of the, the shake and bake, so to speak. He's the quicker of the two backs. And last year, basically, this offense was all Raphael Little. Yeah. This year, more weapons. I think that's been the difference. They found more weapons offensively. This Kentucky football team. Low snap. Woodson just has to eat it. And does the smart thing. Don't try to pick it up and make a play. You're feeling the pressure from the defense. Go ahead, get yourself down on it. And, and now it's going to be third down and forever. Now you want to protect the football. Move it a little bit but don't turn it over. Now that may be a story. Trey Williams is the center, wearing number 60 for Rich Brooks. And Trey Williams, this is just his third start ever at center. Yeah, we talked to Joker Phillips about that. You had to ask the question, has there been a quarterback center exchange that, where it's gone on the ground? He knocked on wood and said, no, don't jinx me. And you jinxed the man. Look at that. All right. And you don't even feel bad about it. Third down and 19. Woodson, little dump off, pass is complete. Not much doing as they hit Steve Johnson with the catch. Johnson picks up 12, but not nearly enough for the first down. He goes to the tight, actually it's the tight end, Jacob Tammy. The big tight end, they like to throw two, six, five. Came in as a, a little undersized tight end, six, five, 225. He's up to about 240 now. They like to go to him, but that's what you're trying to do. Just manage it. Maybe you get somebody to pop one out of there, but you don't want to turn the football over in that type of situation if you're Kentucky. Tim Masty will punt for the first time today. Snap is high, no problem. Hits it away. Back deep, Noah Whiteside comes up and makes a dangerous catch. Gamecocks will take over on the 13-yard line. Well, in the long history of Kentucky football, the all-time leading rusher is someone you may never have heard of. He has already had the ball one time so far today. Neither team has scored. South Carolina, they knocked on the door, but had a pass intercepted at the one-yard line. Corey Boyd, another carry for the junior from Orange, New Jersey. And Boyd with good first down yards. I'll tell you, Corey Boyd's been about a shoestring away from breaking two or three of these runs and running behind that young offensive line. He's got two seniors on it, but a sophomore and two true freshmen. And you see the big fella there, Darrell White, playing stout for this Kentucky Wildcat defense. And that's going to do it for the first quarter of play. Both teams racking up a lot of yards, but so far, goose eggs on the scoreboard. Saturday night here in Lexington, Kentucky. The excitement is high. Looking for some points to be scored here in the second quarter. Kentucky fans have seen some good football here at Commonwealth Stadium so far this year. Wildcats, they're 3-0 at home. After 15 minutes of football against South Carolina, we are scoreless. In case you're wondering, the last time Kentucky was 4-0 at home, that was way back in 1987. Hey, what do you mean way back? 17 oh, years ago. Way back. 19 years ago. Yesterday. <laughs> second down and five. First play of the second quarter. Newton hands it off. They stay on the ground to Corey Boyd. And a flag comes down. Before the snap, ball start. 93. Offense. Five yard penalty. Still second down. The tight end, Robert Havlovic. 
Well, I tell you, that drives Steve Spurrier crazy. You can you can tolerate the penalties penalties if they're effort penalties, where it's holding penalties. Those are part of football. But when you call a timeout and a guy goes to the line of scrimmage and jumps, boy, I'll tell you, he, he just get all under your skin. Is it hard to keep your concentration after a, a TV timeout at the end of the quarter? No, not really. I mean, you know they're part of the game. I don't, I don't think so. Empty backfield. Newton with four receivers. Two right, two left. Pass is high. Oh, dangerous. Good catch. Mo Brown with the football and running room. He's out across the 30. Corey Boyd with that catch and a pickup of 20 yards. Yeah, Corey Boyd, they split him out and they try to run a little screen pass to him and you see him come underneath, gets a tremendous block by Sidney Rice there, the do-it-all wide receiver, and now it's just athletic ability in the open field. Savelle Newton, the eyes, taking the defense away from the screen. Nice block, and then it's all Corey Boyd. Good hands for the tailback. Excellent catch. to throw on first down, flag down on the field, and this time, the catch not made by Boyd. Uh, that'll clear your sinuses. Javard Lindsay with a big time lick inside. Get the word here from the official. Offside, defense number 98, five yard penalty. Right. Nice first down. And like I said, those are the penalties that drive coaches crazy. False starts, lining up offsides, and, or jumping offside. The effort penalties, you can tolerate. Those just alignment penalties drive you crazy. Myron Pryor has had a good year for Rich Brooks. Leads the team with four sacks. A mental mistake there. Newton designed run. First down and more. Across the 45, down to the 42-yard line. Big gainer. For Savelle Newton, Marcus McClinton brings him down. Now let's go back to the studio and Linda Cole. Crazy finish between USC and Washington. USC by six seconds to go at the 15. Look at the bottom right of the screen. Washington can't get the playoff. The seconds will be ticking off. Huskies came oh so close, but the Trojans hang on by six. Also in the Pac-10, Oregon about to take on Cal, coming up on ABC at 8 Eastern. Oakland A's skipper Ken Mock at the game. Did someone tell him his A's are playing the Tigers? Down at 10, Newton blitz. The blitz is picked up, and Sidney Rice with the football and a good chunk of yards. What a nice throw with the eyes reading things out and timed it just right. Savelle Newton, and that's been the surprise. Coach Spurrier talked about was his accuracy with the football. I mean, dropping back and then with the eyes, those flat corner combination take the take the uh, outside guy down to the, the flat route and then he just zips one to Sidney Rice. Newton now six for nine 59 yards. Well, he is comfortable in the shotgun. Newton looking for a bunch to the end zone too high looking for Rice. Well, that's one that may have been you want it back and you want to drill one just a nice line shot because you see the the collapse of the safety and the corner nice route by Sidney Rice and you see the corner trying to fall back inside on the play actually it's the safety Roger Williams trying to fall back from the far side and that's when you got to have a little more mustard on it, a little more pop on it. Sidney Rice leaves the game for this play, at least for the game. Cox, he's replaced by O.J. Murdoch. Number 15, a true freshman from Tampa. Newton. Pass incomplete, looking for McKinley. And that's where the defense, what Kentucky's doing to Savelle Newton. He's getting a lot of different looks, a lot of different zone looks and drops from the inside out. And he's going to have to just stay patient. They're getting pressure because of zone blitzing and look, bringing some linebackers, dropping some uh, some defensive ends and mixing the zone coverage in the back. And Mike Archer, he's done a fabulous job so far of keeping Savelle Newton guessing in the passing game. 
J.D. Craigman has come on in the defensive line for the Kentucky right. Wildcats. They show, specialist. show straight up man-to-man -man here. You see it across the board. Newton escapes the pressure. Newton with a chance, and he's across the first down line, and it's going to be a fresh set of downs for the game. Let, let me tell you something. As good a coach as Steve Spurrier is, he is, he can't coach that. <laughs> that's that. That is just, that's the all young man, right? That's all Savelle Newton. Look at that. You can't coach that. You can't coach the moves, the speed, when to bring it down, when things open up. You can do all the coaching you want, talk about reading defenses and things, but that is pure athletic ability, and that's the element that Savelle Newton brings to this South Carolina offense. And talk about balance for Steve Spurrier's bunch. They now have 11 rushes and 11 passes. Yeah. Absolutely. I but mean, you, and you, you think coming in, well, we talked about the wide receivers. They're just going to wind up and throw it. I mean, they're very balanced. If you look at South Carolina at the end of the day, you're going to see a balanced sheet of both running and throwing. Boy. Locked down. Wesley Woodyard, first man to get him. Well, Andre, this is a trouble spot for South Carolina. Once again, in the red zone, can they get it done? Dating back to last game, they're just one for five in scoring opportunities in the red zone. And if you're Rich Brooks, you hope they hold to the trend because you can accept bending but not breaking. You see there, 12 rushes for South Carolina, 11 passes, and they're both teams are very, very balanced. Six rushes, six passes for Kentucky as well. But we talk about the big time playmakers, they're out at wide receiver. Both teams would like to get a lead and then run the football late in this football game. Well, we got a slot receiver just out there by himself. Newton, pass is complete. Murda, the freshman lowers his head, but he's not going to get the first down yards that he needs. Going to bring up a third down and short. O.J. Murdoch, 100, 200 meter sprint champion in Florida. He's a speed receiver, electric once he gets the football. Nice little hitch route right here, just a nice quick drop and send it out there to O.J. Murdoch and try to get him into the open field. Let him work one-on-one -on -one with Carl Booker, the senior corner from Chesapeake, West Virginia. Third down and two. Oh, once again, Mike Arthur trying to bend but not break defensively for Kentucky. Little option look, and Newton, first down and more. It's a touchdown for South Carolina. Well, excellent decision by Savelle Newton of reading the edge man on the line of scrimmage. We talk about it in film session. If there's two guys outside the tackle, there's not. There's only one right there. That's Savelle Newton's guy, Wesley Woodyard. He takes the pitch man, and I'm going to keep it, and he gets north and south in a hurry. Boy, that element of bringing legs to the quarterback position, dangerous if you're Steve Spurrier. Ryan Suckup, come on and attempt the extra point. No worries. It's now 7-0 South Carolina on top of Kentucky. And the beat continues for Steve Spurrier's offense against the Kentucky Wildcats. They're on the board first. Let's see if Kentucky can answer when we come back. For that touchdown, Todd, what was going on? Eric, it was almost a touchdown that wasn't. As he said in the play, Coach Steve Spurrier had a change of thought. He dropped his play calling pages, jumping up and down, coming all the way out of the coach's box, trying to get a timeout. Did not like the play, and did not like the defense that he was seeing out there, but no one on the South Carolina team can see him, so no timeout was called. Touchdown, Coach. Next time, just let it go. <laughs> Tell you what, I thought it was a perfect call. He had one guy on the end, of, end, end man on the line of scrimmage, which was an easy read for Savelle Newton. Tell you what, he did a good job, read him, got uh, Wesley Woodyard to commit, and then all of a sudden he's in the end zone. Kick off deep into the end zone. Keenan Burton will just take a knee. So the Wildcats will start their third possession on the 20-yard line. And now if you're Andre Woodson, you got to go down and get some points of your own. Doesn't necessarily have to put stick one in the end zone, but you want to match points with points, especially early in a football game. You're at home. Regain control of this football game. Andre Woodson under center. Taking his time.
Woodson has his pass tipped and incomplete. Looking for Jacob Tammy. Let's now go back to the studio for a Sports Center in-game update. Linda Cohn. Linda. Did you catch this one? Florida LSU. Tigers down 13, but driving three minutes left. Jamarcus Russell. He had a career high three interceptions. That one by Tony Joyner. Florida holds on to win 23 to 10. Hey, the Gators could move up to number two in the polls. That's because number two Auburn lost at home to Arkansas. Next week on ESPN, 7:45 Eastern. It's Auburn and Florida. That was an absolute stunner with Arkansas, what they were able to do on the road against yeah. Auburn today. Yeah, with a young football team. Second down and 10. Hand off to Little. Left side. And Little pushed out of bounds, but not before he picks up eight yards. Stoney Woodson knocked them out of bounds. And he got a tremendous block from Tony Dixon that uh, allowed for uh, Raphael Little to turn the corner. But we talked to Joker Phillips. The offensive coordinator for Kentucky said hey, we'd like to get those two guys in the game at the same time. Just trying to get more and more weapons on the field for the Kentucky Wildcats. I don't know if you can read anything into this, but the second quarter has been much more friendly to the Wildcats this year than it was a year ago. Trying to get South Carolina to jump. Andre Woodson, now he goes into his cadence. Looking for three yards. Set up a screen. They'll get it. Raphael Little, first down yards and more out to the 45-yard line. Boy, they pick up the blitz. They bring Maurice, excuse me, Eric Norwood from the edge. And right there, you see him trying to get through. They swing around, and then all of a sudden, they got the perfect play call. You got man-to-man -man on the outside, and linebackers blitzing. You're able to slip the back out in the flat. And once he turns up, it's the second level of the defense before he even sees a different colored jersey. 18 yards on that game. John Connor is now coming to the game for the first time at fullback. Or Kentucky. Keenan Burton, that play was going nowhere fast. He has dropped to the backfield. Yeah, Ryan Brown. And I tell you, he was not fooled. Just stayed at home and contained, just like you're taught if you're a defensive end. Right here, watch the eyes. Just searching, searching, and all of a sudden, I don't, this doesn't smell right. Let me get a little bit deeper, and then all of a sudden, he's got his hands on Keenan Burton. You know, I, I, I just question the call. You're running, you're executing in the passing game, you're having some success running. Why the trick plays? Just stay within your offense. Loss of seven. You want to make a big play, make it down the field. Play action. Woodson showing off that arm. Has a man. Incomplete. Great coverage. Fred Bennett showing that recovery speed. Yeah, he, we talked about him. He's a guy that the scouts really, really like. They try to go deep down the sideline to Keenan Burton. He's got a step. If Andre Woodson throws that baby out there, he's got the home run he's looking for. He almost came up with this with an interception, Fred Bennett. Boy, if you lead him down the field, it is a home run for six points. Bennett with nine career interceptions, almost had number 10. Yeah, not a lot of guys get behind him. I mean, he's got tremendous speed and size, and you saw the closing speed once the ball was a little bit underthrown. Kentucky two for three and third down conversions. South Carolina just going to try to keep everything in front of them. Big umbrella on the defense. Woodson, pump fake. It's Little out of the backfield. Little across the 50, kind of push his way to the first down marker, and he may have gotten there. He's going to be close, and it's going to it's going to make the, make for a decision from Rich Brooks, the head coach of Kentucky. I mean, the fans here are chanting, they're up, they want him to go for it, and there's no doubt. Trotting the big fullback John Connor on the field, and. Kentucky gonna go for this one they needed 17 they got 16 do you agree with this decision to go for it? well you know what you came to win and you're at home and you're undefeated at home sometimes you take chances if you feel good about how your defense is playing take a chance here maybe you're trying to throw them off 
Over the top, Little with the first down. Boy, they didn't waste any time, and that's how, if you're going to go for it, go ahead and get to the line of scrimmage, get set, and snap the football. Catch the defense a little bit out of position, get tremendous push in there. That's athletic ability. Nice jump over the top by Raphael Little. Watch him elevate right there. He jumps about two, maybe two and a half, three yards. That was old school Billy Sims he right there. He got a bad spot, too. This is a first down, but he got a bad spot on this deal. Should clearly be a first down. No worries. Got elevation like you. <laughs> no. You see? Huh? That's what they did it back in the 70s. <laughs> Billy Sims, Charles White, Marcus Allen, they always went over the top. Yes, indeed. But watch this. Watch the elevation by Raphael Little. Right here now he's airborne and coming down well over the 45-yard line. Nice. First down at 10. A lot of guys inside here for South Carolina trying to play that run. Makes for nice one-on-one -on -one matchups on the outside. Woodson has his pass tip. That's the second tip ball at the line of scrimmage. You don't expect that out of a guy six feet, five inches tall. Well, good one. Brewing here in Lexington, Kentucky, South Carolina. And Kentucky both three and two, both trying to make some inroads in the SEC East alongside Andre Ware with Todd Harris. I'm Eric Collins. You know, you, you talked about the tip passes from a tall quarterback. Sometimes you get that when you're throwing down to a shorter receiver. But if there, he's going to Jacob Tammy, the big tight end across the middle, who's also 6'5". I feel little. It's the first man miss. But can't get away from Cody Wells. He's brought down to bring up a third down. I like the game plan. I like the execution. Kentucky, the big offensive line, they've gotten them involved. They're protecting Andre Woodson in the pass game. They're able to run the football. We talked about that trickery stuff. Stay away from that stuff. You, you get behind a down and distance marker, you make a you make a bad situation for yourself. I think they can move the football on South Carolina just executing the offense. They need to get inside the 35-yard line. They're showing a cover two look. Safeties are up. Safeties deep. They rotate the three deep. Woodson, no one open. Escape. He's going to go down. Sacked by Eric Norwood. His second of the game. Eric Norwood, the true freshman. He's their, the team's best pass rusher. That's how Tyrone Nix described him. He really elevated his play during fall camp. They actually rotate to just cover one where it's, you know, just a safety and man-to-man -man coverage everywhere, and the receivers could not separate for uh, Andre Woodson. Nobody got open. Tim Masty will come on, kick it away. Oh, white side. Good punt. That's the back trap. Hold the fair catch and lost it. Loose ball. And South Carolina somehow keeps the football. Boy, he fought the other one. The punt before that one, Noah Woodside, Whiteside fought that one, and then all of a sudden he drops the second one. He's having, I don't know if it's lights or what, but he's having a hard time back deep. Noah Whiteside, almost a disastrous play. Ball escapes him, but the game cuts. A little bit of luck, they've got the football back drive they converted a drive into seven points and a big reason why was good on number 13 Savelle Newton. Yeah the legs of Savelle Newton putting pressure on the defense when things break down up front all of a sudden you've got a guy that you don't have to call the perfect play he can make it by by running the football right here in the open field and smart tucking the football away and then this is the touchdown he delivers on the option play. Savelle Newton with the legs not with the arm so far in this football game for Steve Spurrier in the South Carolina Gamecock. The one thing we've learned about Newton so far today, he didn't play high school baseball. That slide he had was atrocious. <laughs> He's working on that as well. Corey Boyd, good second effort. Gets the ball out to the 10-yard line. Pickup of seven yards. He's been playing with an ankle injury. They got him back, and he's got a lot of, a lot of moves to him. Tough, tough runner inside, and tremendous speed. 
once he gets in the open field. Ability to make you miss. See that boy. 4.6 yards a carry in this football game so far. Amazing. He's been battling an ankle injury in recent weeks. Yeah. And in motion, Mo Brown give to Boyd again. Close to first down yardage. Now you're just trying to take a little fight out of the Kentucky Wildcats if you're Steve Spurrier. I'm just going to line up and get behind my my offensive line and just plunge it in there with Corey Boyd. Just kind of make you sick. I punch you in the mouth a few times with the football. Work my way down the football field. You know, and they're doing it at different speeds. You saw early when they started this football game, they were no huddle at the line of scrimmage, letting Savelle Newton see things. Now they're, they're calling for a measurement, but he's really in no hurry here. Just taking his time, letting some clock run, and just moving the football. That's how much they need to keep this drive alive. Steve Spurrier, mastermind. What's he thinking about a third and inches? Oh, well, right here, he's just going to go right back to uh, to his workhorse, Corey Boyd. May, you know, may run my favorite play in situations like this. Just let Savelle Newton, quarterback, sneak it. A little pressure from the center, snap it, and, and go with it. Three receivers in the game, but they do. Follow your lead, Andre, and they go for the sneak, and it looks like they've got it up. Yeah, I think he's got plenty. Didn't need very much. He got a nice push up front from Chris White, the team's best offensive lineman, senior. Started all 12 games last year. Won the team's most uh, improved offensive lineman award during the spring. If you're going to follow anyone, follow number 60. Center is a Remington Award candidate, one of the best centers in the country. Corey Boyd, third carry of this possession. Not much doing on first down. Good Jeremy Jarman, red shirt freshman, was in there. I'll tell you, boy, the Kentucky continuing to fight. This is a lot closer. Right now, you give credit, this is going to be once, I think once you shake this thing out, it's going to be a good football game. This is not a whole lot of scoring, and we expected some big-time point production. That's not happening. Round the man in motion. Three receivers left side. Toss it out quickly to Mo Brown. And Brown sneaks out. Looks like he's got first down yards. Well, Steve McNair, Ray Lewis, and the Ravens are off to a great start this season. And Monday night, they visit Jake Plummer, Javon Walker, and the Denver Broncos. Can the Ravens' punishing defense keep them undefeated? Is it Monday yet? That's Monday Night Football on ESPN at 8.30 Eastern. It's also available in high definition on ESPN HD. Boy, say what you want to about the Ravens' defense. It's been Steve McNair that has kind of held that thing together and some nice fourth quarter comebacks he is playing some outstanding football for the baltimore ravens just what they needed what they brought him in to do he's provided press set it down the game comes. newton wants to throw pump it has a man wide open mckinley behind the defense with the football and mckinley out to the 31 yard line a huge gain finally brought down by Trevard Lindley, but not before a gain of 43 yards. Well, Kentucky notorious for giving up the big play, but you watch Savelle Newton in the eyes and the pump fake. You're going to see it right here. Nice little stutter step by Kenny McKinley and gets behind the secondary. Now he's off to the races in the open field, making moves, making a big play for South Carolina. But it was that young man, a nice pump fake that got the defense in the stutter step that held him and sold a fake. Boyd and Stafford back behind Newton. On a score for the second consecutive possession. Newton changing the play at the line. Delayed handoff. Nothing going on. Boyd is wrapped and dropped. 
Well, you just saw what's been a problem all season long for the Kentucky Wildcats. Defensive coordinator Mike Archer, his team, they get turnovers, but too frequently they gamble. Yeah, and a lot of situations last week against Central Michigan, you know, they won the football game, but they had them in third down 17, third down 15, and giving up those first downs, that takes a lot out of a defense. All of a sudden you find yourself on the field playing more and more plays, getting tired, and then that's when the offenses can really take advantage of it. On the year, Kentucky, they have forced 14 turnovers in five games, but they've given up a whole bunch of yards in the process. They play this drive, and boy, gonna bring up a third down and short. Let's go back down to the field. Todd, what's going on? Eric, you guys were talking earlier about Steve, the mastermind Spurrier. Well, after their loss to Auburn, he was pretty down and depressed, but nothing brings you up like being inducted into the prestigious University of Florida Ring of Honor. Now, prestigious because the criteria it takes three things. One of the three. You need to have one of the following national title. Coach Spurrier led Florida to the national title in 96. Win a Heisman, he did that in 66. Or be in the NFL Hall of Fame. Two out of three is not bad. We add our congratulations to Steve Spurrier. Thank you, Todd. Corey Boyd not going anywhere fast. My question about Steve Spurrier in that ring of honor, right, what took nice, him so long? Yeah, what took so long? <laughs> <laughs> he had the national championship a long time ago in the Heisman years before that, so 30 years before. Well, you talk about an outstanding coach and a, a guy that's just flat out good for college football is Steve Spurrier. And talking about a riverboat gambler, he's going to go for it again. It's fourth down and four. He's signaling to Savelle Newton again. He doesn't see him. And he does finally get the yeah, timeout he's call. Trying to get the timeout call. And finally, he got it at the final moment. So, South Carolina, they burned their last timeout. Well, the South Carolina offense giving their fans something to cheer about. A little bit over two minutes remaining here in this first half. And the Cox are on top of the Cats. 10-0. Scoring drives in each of the last two possessions for South Carolina. First a touchdown by Sabal Newton, and then a 42-yard field goal by Ryan Suckup. Suckup, one of the most versatile legs in the country. He punts, and he kicks. And he does both of them very well. What a luxury that is. Again to the end zone and Keenan Burton. That's the field. Let's go back to the studio where Linda Cohn is standing by. Linda. All right, Eric, and we have a little theme going for you coming up in the Yamaha ATV Halftime Report. It's all about the Tigers. The Detroit Tigers are on to the ALCS against Oakland after stunning the Yankees. The Auburn Tigers are upset by Arkansas at home. And the LSU Tigers, how did they do in the swamp? We'll see at halftime because all of that. Nice theme, isn't it, Eric, coming up? Thank you, Linda. We will be watching. Let's see how aggressive Kentucky gets here. Underneath two minutes to play, first half. Woodson drops it off to his tight end, Jacob Tammy. Tammy picks up a couple on first down. Yeah, Rockwell they like, run. They like to flex Jacob Tammy out, and they're really trying to get him the football. They found a matchup that they like him against a linebacker and maybe a smaller defensive back when when South Carolina goes to their nickel package. So he's going to have an opportunity to make some plays. Woodson throws on the run, passes low. Fred Bennett on the coverage, and it's going to bring up a third down at six. He was looking for Dickie Lyons, Jr. Dickie Lyons has been very quiet so far today for Coach Rhett Brooks. Yeah, he's got some tremendous pressure from Eric Norwood, just a freshman, true freshman, 6'2", 258, and is really playing some tremendous football for South Carolina. See the man, pass incomplete. Dickie Lyons again, the intended target. 
Boy, I'll tell you, third downs are just killing Kentucky. Cannot convert right here. Andre Woodson has his man wide open. Just a little bit too low. And you know what? That's you got to make a play. Dicky lines. That's not on the quarterback. You got to make a play. He's back there fighting, scratching, getting run over by Eric Norwood and hit every time he throws the wood. I mean, you have time on the clock, and there's never enough points in the first half. They've got breathing room down here outside the 20 yard line. 56 seconds, a couple of shots, and you get out of bounds. You have an opportunity, maybe get a field goal, or you come up with a big play here. I, I think you try to go down and get some more points. And looks like there's certainly formation for it. South Carolina, they have no timeouts remaining. Nope. Safe call. Keeps it. Almost has the ball ripped away from behind. And, you know, now he, he's trying to pop one, a big play, and then now he's just content on letting the clock tick down and go into halftime up 10 10 nothing but uh, you, you're just trying to pop one through there if you're able to do it you move the chain chains will stop the clock but there Steve Spurrier just gonna let it run out Newton looking for a big play flag is down just throws it away in the general vicinity of Corey Boyd well, maybe Right around the line of scrimmage, a couple of flags came out. Somebody may have flinched. Yep, false start. And oh. a hole, double dip. Double their pleasure. Might as well get your money's worth. Go for ice cream. You're always getting a double. Illegal street. formation. There were not at least seven players on the line of scrimmage. The penalty is declined. Holding. Holding. Offense number 55. Ten yard penalty from the previous spot. Remains second down. Thomas Coleman, none too happy. Legal formation they don't call, and they call the penalty against him. Left guard from Johnston, South Carolina. Yeah, now I think you just you know kneel it down and go into halftime. Certainly don't want anything bad to happen right here. Give Kentucky some points, some cheap points. Well, this first half has been dominated by the South Carolina Gamecocks. They have come here to Lexington, and so far, they're pitching a shutout defensively, and offensively, they're doing what they want. Big gainer for Corey Boyd as we finish out the first half of play. Hawks going to stop momentarily while they move the chains, but that'll probably be the final play of the first half. I'll tell you what, when Corey Boyd went down, there was about five seconds. A little home cooking. Took it all the way down to two seconds. And that'll do it. No more time for action here in the first half. South Carolina, South Carolina they come close to tripling their pleasure, at least in terms of total offense, against the Kentucky Wildcats. They did very well offensively, and their defense was stout against that emerging offense for Kentucky. Well, Steve Spurrier standing by with Todd Harris. Todd, take it away. Well, Coach, he's always a been a drop-back quarterback. Coached him all year. How do you like having a running quarterback? Well, it's very helpful when you don't have great pass protection. But, uh, yes, yeah, Savelle uh, has run for a bunch of first downs, keeps, keeps drives going for us. Yeah, he's pretty good. What have you seen in the first half that you can build on in the second? Uh, not too much. Uh, we had four possessions. I guess they only had three. That's just sort of the way our games have been going lately. We had six last week. Auburn had six, so we'll have some fast games. Thanks for your time, Coach. Now, Steve Spurrier, a man receivers at times when he had an opportunity to make some plays, but he just hadn't had a whole lot of time to find guys open. You know, a running game will take a little bit of that heat off, but he should have a, a, a pretty good second. This is Keenan Burton on the return. His first return of the game, and he's out close to the 25-yard line. A flag flies late. Yeah, this one's going to be a block in the back. In Kentucky, looks like it's Terrell Bankhead, the uh, during the return number 24. Illegal block in the back, number 24, return team. Half the distance to the goal, first down. No trouble for Rich Brooks, just right out of the gate. Let's go back down to the field. Todd, what's going on down there? Well, fellas, just moments ago, I talked with Kentucky head coach Rich Brooks. He gave me three numbers that have really made him upset. Three, 13, and zero. They only had the ball three times in the first half. 13, that's their total time of possession in the first half, and zero, the number of points. He said, when we get South Carolina pinned down there, we got to get the ball back, and we got to get some points on the board. Eric? And when you're not doing much offensively, it's hard to get the fans and the crowd into the game. 
That advantage has been nullified by a good first half by South Carolina. Try and get the fans back on their side here to start this third quarter in this drive. A little swing out. Tony Dixon in and out of the hands. Incomplete. Well, I like the game plan that Joker Phillips and Randy Sanders have put together for Andre Woodson. Now he's just got to have some guys around him step up and make plays. Raphael Little, excuse me, Tony Dixon, they're putting the ball on the ground, trying to run maybe before he, uh, he had the football. But you've got to have some guys make plays. Dickie Lyons put one on the ground on the third down, big third down in the first half. Guys got to catch the football. Ducky with 45 points a week ago against Central Michigan, a goose egg. 30 minutes against South Carolina. Woodson, man in his face, gets it out complete to Pulley. The backup quarterback showing that athleticism in space gets out across the 20 before Eric Norwood trips him down. It's a gain of 12 and a first down. Yeah, Curtis Pulley was the starting quarterback coming out of spring practice, was ahead of Andre Woodson. And I'll tell you what, he didn't take care of business after spring practice, kind of allowed Andre to really leapfrog him, and then they got into fall camp, and Andre Woodson made the most of, uh, of the second opportunity that he had. But I'll tell you what, he is an athlete, can play receiver, running back, wherever they line him up. He's blocked a couple of kicks. He's a tremendous athlete. Woodson, don't think he saw the pressure, and throws an interception. Pass is picked off by Stoney Woodson, and great field position for the Gamecocks. And that's what you start to do as a quarterback. When guys are putting the ball on the ground, you start to press, trying to put the ball into spaces that just aren't there. And that's what happened to Andre Woodson here. You'll see it trying to go to the corner route right in this area to Dickie Lyons. It doesn't get enough on the football. He's rolling left, running out of time, had tremendous pressure by Rodney Polk, the outside linebacker, and Stoney Woodson comes up with a big interception for South Carolina. For Woodson, his second interception. Well, Georgia is in the red zone against Tennessee. You can tune to ESPN to see the result. In our game, South Carolina, they're knocking on the door of the red zone. Ball in the 25-yard line. Newton, his first snap in the third quarter. Wants a bunch. Pulls it down. Can he get away? No, he can't. Sacked in the backfield. Good defensive pressure. Ventrell Jenkins, his first sack of the season. Yeah, the sophomore from Columbia, South Carolina, making good against his home college, home state college. Tell you what, this will be big here. You got to play. You got United. You need a defensive stop here if you're Kentucky. Big turnover early in this second half. You don't want to let things get out of hand. It was a 10-10 game last year at halftime. They came over, turned the ball over on four consecutive drives, and that allowed South Carolina to really take control of the football game. Great pass out right side. Corey Boyd. Boyd slips a couple of tackles down to the 10-yard line. Well, we talked about his playmaking ability in the open field. They like to run the screen, get him out in space, and he's so fab. He's fabulous. Once he gets matched up on linebackers and defensive backs, just flat out outruns him. You see here, Savelle Newton, a nice little comeback underneath screen pass. Big guys out there blocking for him. Sidney Rice throwing blocks for uh, Corey Boyd as well. And now South Carolina sitting at point blank range. Once again, in that red zone. Ball at the 10-yard line. Three receivers in the game. It goes to Boyd up the gut. And Boyd, refusing to go down, gets to the five. We talk about his quickness and his speed, but you forget about his toughness between the tackles. Going 6'1", just over 200 pounds. And he's got the frame to run up inside. You see here, Savelle Newton just got a nice little underneath handoff, reading the defensive end. Held him just enough and felt like, well, he's committed to me. I'll go ahead and give the football underneath. I thought it was a good decision. There's number four. Sidney Rice just moved out of your picture. He's left side. I'd like to throw the jump ball to him. Yeah, this is where Savelle Newton is so dangerous. Everybody spread out. They stay on the ground, and Boyd with a touchdown! Well, give credit to that big offensive line up front for South Carolina. Chris White, Garrett Anderson, they go right over those guys. Thomas Coleman, the senior. He's played four different spots along that offensive line. A nice little underneath handoff, and then it was Corey Boyd just breaking tackles to get himself into the end zone. 
Corey Boyd, his fourth touchdown on the ground this year. Ryan Suckup to make it a 17-0 lead for the visiting Gamecocks, and he does. They'll talk about just what the doctor drive, and the Gamecocks keep on keeping on. Much to the chagrin of the Kentucky Wildcats. Yeah, now if you're Andre Woodson in the in the uh, Kentucky Wildcats, a little bit press, a little, little bit of pressure on you. Now you're down 17, nothing, three scores. You need to put some points on the scoreboard here. Another opportunity for Keenan Burton, and Burton goes down at the 21-yard line. Let's go back to Linda Cohn for a primetime pulse. All right, Eric, a chance to see what else is going on in our family and networks. Over on ESPN, Georgia's got Joe Tereshinsky's back, and they're proving they have an offense. They're beating Tennessee now 24-7. Over on ABC, Cal against Oregon. Oh, Cal lighting it up. Two touchdown passes by Nate Longshore. Cal taking control of that game. And now back to you with more of South Carolina and Kentucky on ESPN2. Linda, thank you so much. This may be the drive of the game for Kentucky. They need to get something going and fast. Mario four in motion and again pressure and the pass incomplete. The freshman Maurice Grinter loses it. Well, once again, you know your quarterback's fighting for you back there. He's taking shot after shot and receivers, whether they're fullbacks or slot receivers or whatever. Watch the shot he takes here. I mean yeah, that's that's painful. Trust me. <laughs> And you got to catch the football. He's delivering the football, standing in there and fighting his heart out for you. Somebody's got to make a play for him. Woodson came into this game with fantastic numbers. 14 touchdowns, second best in the country, and just two interceptions. He's had his troubles this evening against South Carolina. Lushed out of the pocket. Uses the stiff arm. Ball squirts loose. And it goes out of bounds. It's going to stay with Kentucky. Dangerous play. Dickie wow. Lyons got hit pretty hard at the tail end of that play. Now he was trying to come up on uh, one of the linebackers. Looked like Marvin Sapp for South Carolina. He put that football away right here. Just throw it away. I mean, there's not, no one's open. You try to set the screen to the left side of the formation. Once you escape the pocket, let it go. Right here. Boy, just not a whole lot of room to wiggle all night long for Andre Woodson. Really, really elevated his play this season coming into this football game. Randy Sanders has really helped him develop as a quarterback. Third and ten. Woodson has a man complete to little, but he's going to be short of first down yards. And that's where it's, that's what the night's been like. For this Kentucky offense, just a little bit too short. Right there on third down, finally they make the catch, but unable to come up with the first down. They're going to punt the football away and give South Carolina some pretty good field position once again. You know, if I'm the quarterback, I round those guys up on the sideline and start giving a good chewing. You know, somebody's got to make a play. I'm out here fighting my tail off for you. Make some plays. And Mastic comes on. Punt the football away. Oh, they're going to fake it. Meste has it. He has the first down and more. Changes hands and gets out across the 45 before he's dragged down by the shoulder pads. Maybe that's the shot in the arm that the Kentucky Wildcats need. A pickup of 18. Oh, the block by Jason Dickerson, the snapper, peels back, and that's what's going to allow for the punter, Matt to, to get the first down. Look at that block. That will wake you up at 6 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> I mean, that's better than any alarm clock. Unbelievable block by the long snapper. Rich Brooks saying he's got a little bit of riverboat gambler in him. Fresh set it out. Let's see if the Wildcats can feed off of this. Little right side. He's stood up and dropped down. Jasper Brinkley. Now watch again the block by Jason Dickerson. Just listen. Nice peel back block. 
Unbelievable. <laughs> I'll tell you what, that's what sprung him. And it's Kentucky, day saying, guys, that's how you do it. That's the longest run of the game Kentucky, for Kentucky. Trying to get a little physical. Four yards on first down, running the football, coming right at South Carolina. Oh, South Carolina got a lot of guys crowded in there, showing blitz. Trying to get to one of the outside receivers out here on the outside. Going out to Little. And Little with room to run across the 40. Down close to the 35, and they're going to add some yards. He was hit late on his way out of bounds. Let's check in with Linda Cohn for a Sports Center in-game update. All right, Eric, you know, Georgia is sending a message not only to Tennessee, but to Florida and the SEC. They can score. Joe Tereshinsky play action, finding Brandon Sutherland. Second straight game with two TDs for Sutherland. It is 24-7 Georgia. And do look at this. Duke, they came into this game having scored just 13 points all season. They have a 14-10 lead over Alabama in the third. We're talking Duke, guys. Steve Spurrier smiling over that score, former coach of the Duke Blue Devils. Well, here, a big so gainer. Smiling here as well. Rich Brooks' team moving down the field after that fourth down conversion. Personal foul is going to put the ball all the way down to the 21 yard line. And momentum right now on the Kentucky sideline, moving the football. Woodson showing off that big arm. Pass is complete. Dickie Lyons with the grab. Gain of 20 yards. Yeah, Jacob Tammy, the, it was the big tight end. All 6'5", 240 pounds of him going up. And I'll tell you what makes this play is his ability to climb the ladder and catch the football at its highest point. Nice little corner route to the backside. You'll see the roll here with the intentions of throwing it all the way back. And not a lot of college football quarterbacks can make that throw. But a great grab by Jacob Tanner. Wildcats looking to punch it in. They give it to Little. Flag on the field. He did not make it across the goal line. All right, a lot of flags. A lot of laundry down on the field here. Interesting, but I'll tell you, what a big time throw. I mean, you had two guys in a, a small area to squeeze it in, and Andre Woodson, we talked about it, he's got all the tools. 6'5", 232, with a gun for an arm, and fundamentally, he is sound. Outside, defense, number 41. Half the distance to the go. It remains first down. Another pick of about a half yard. We talked about him smiling. I don't see a smile on his <laughs> face right now. Well, I'll tell you, got to give it, got to give it up to that young man. He's been on his back every time he's thrown the football, pretty much in this football game, and now he's got his team down here knocking, trying to get back in this football game. A little behind Grinter in the backfield. Man in motion is Connor. And Little tries to jump over the pile, bobbles the football. That's a dangerous situation. Well, it looks as they're going to rule a second down. But Eric Norwood, which you saw earlier on a fourth down where Little went over the top, and Norwood didn't allow him to get elevated here. You're going to see him catch him right along the legs, gets penetration, and then right there stops him. Can I get over? And right there, the whistles are blowing, so the ball comes out, but. Eric Norwood playing a fabulous game. A couple of sacks, led the team in sacks coming into this football game. And now just playing some minutes. And keep in mind, he's a true freshman right out of high school. Young fella. He actually knocked the ball loose. Yeah. Little was trying to leave his feet. That was almost disastrous for Kentucky. and keeps it himself to the corner. Touchdown, Kentucky! The Kentucky Wildcats answer a punch with a punch of their own, and their 
are back in this game. All right, what sold this play was the play fake. Watch the head and the eyes right there. And that sold got to Ryan Bryan, the defensive end, to bite down inside. And once you take the step, you cannot recover fast enough for an athletic quarterback like Andre Woodson is going to walk into the end zone. And Rich Brooks says, that's what I'm talking about. Lonis Sieber, first action of the game. Extra point, no problem. It's a 10-point game. And the Kentucky Wildcats, courtesy of their big-time junior quarterback, Andre Woodson, they've got a puncher's chance again. They score a touchdown. This is our sonic scoring drive. Nine plays, they convert a fourth down with a fake punt, and they punch it in with a Andre Woodson one-yard touchdown run. Boy, fantastic drive. And I'll tell you, they had to have it. You hit the nail on the head when they had to have something right now to get themselves back into this football game. The Cats needed a scratch. They did. And they got one. They're now within 10. Can they hold on defensively? That'll be the question. And that's, kick it away. And that's where they got to step up. You know, against South Carolina, force them into more punting type situations, get them into third down and long where they can bring and crowd the line of scrimmage. Stay aggressive even when you get South Carolina into those third down and long situations. Tennessee is in the red zone against Georgia. You can tune to ESPN to see the result. Not much doing on that kickoff return. The Gamecocks get the ball out to the 28-yard line. That's Mike Davis. Well, they tell me that they play hockey here in Lexington. With more on that, Todd, what do you think? Well, Eric, while you and Andre were getting your beauty sleep, I went out last night. 12 o'clock midnight is when they played. The South Carolina Gamecocks were in town. They played the Lexington Ice Center. And the South Carolina Gamecocks actually went up early. So this is kind of reminiscent tonight. Kentucky had to come back, but in the end, it was a beatdown. The Kentucky Wildcats hockey team, they put eight up. Eight to one over South Carolina. They play again tonight at midnight if you guys aren't doing anything. And I got a little present for Andre after this play. Might drop in and check that out tonight. <laughs> First down, Corey Boyd going nowhere. He is stoned by Jarrell White. Call it a whiteout. Yeah, he was an outside linebacker the first two years in the program and moved down a defensive end. And you talk about form tackling, somebody bringing your hips, your shoulder pads, and your helmet. Darrell White showed up in this Kentucky defense right now making a stand. And he got them in second down behind the chains for stay aggressive and come after South Carolina. Adrenaline coursing for this Kentucky Wildcat defense. A loss of four. Stafford in the game as a blocking back for South Carolina. Newton takes it himself, and Newton gets a great oh. block and across the 40-yard line to the 44. Pick up a 17-yard. Don't know if this is a holding penalty. It's right in that area for holding. holding. Yes, it is. Offense number 60, 10-yard penalty in the previous time. Kentucky gets a break. And remains second down. Todd, what's going on? Well, I'll tell you what, you want a Heisman Trophy and everyone wants a piece of you. Look at this. This is Tara Connor, Miss USA. This is her promotional poster for the hockey team. Look at that says. Oh nothing for goodness. Eric Collins, nothing for Todd Harris, nothing oh. for our producer Jim Zeroli. It's all about oh, Andre man. and his stiff arm. You guys never Can see Can you still believe me? me? <laughs> I was up till 1 o'clock watching hockey in the Bluegrass State, and all I get is a poster to give to Andre Ware. That just ain't right. I'll give this to you later, on. <laughs> yeah, save it for me, buddy. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. Oh, I don't know about you guys. Something every week with this group. <laughs> Mike Archer's bunch trying to make it happen. Second down and 24. Boy, and you've got the crowd now involved in this thing. Going to make it hard to hear for Savelle Newton and Steve Spurrier to operate offensively. Things have gone from bad to worse for South Carolina. They're forced to call a timeout, their first of the second half. Let's check in now with Linda Cohn for a Sports Center in-game update. All right, Eric, on ESPN, what a game between Georgia and Tennessee, and what a tremendous second effort. Are you looking at this by Arian Foster of Tennessee? The Volunteers move back within 10. Back to you, Eric. SEC football is getting hot today. It started off with a great one, Auburn against Arkansas. Arkansas with that big upset on the road against the second-ranked Auburn Tigers. 
They'll have a full day of SEC football. Now, I'll tell you, it's Kentucky. This is the shot in the arm that they need. Now, you don't want to give up big plays. You saw Savelle Newton, who was second down and extremely long. All of a sudden, second and 14, he can break your back running the football. That's what happens when you get out of that aggressive mode and you go to that deep zone coverage, trying to just play blanket or play the umbrella. He's a guy, when everything breaks the front line, he can break it out of there, and now you can't recover until he's long past the first down marker. Stay aggressive come after it close things down around him They're giving him something to cheer about here in Kentucky second down at 24 how thick is Steve Spurrier's playbook what do you got for second and 24 you know an inexperienced quarterback make him beat you with his arm don't give those big running lanes where he can pull it down. That's what he wants you to do. That's where Savelle Newton is comfortable. Now they're showing just man-to-man -man defense here. Come after him. Newton wants a bunch. Left side, dangerous pass. Looking for Mo Brown. Jamari Moore was actually the closest man to it. He's already got one interception today. Now let's go back to Linda Cohn for a primetime pulse. Crazy stuff going on in our family of networks. Over at ESPN, Tennessee and Georgia, it's a 10-point game in that one. Over at ABC, Cal is looking to go up 21-3 on Oregon in a big Pac-10 showdown. But Oregon's Jarris Bird picked off Nate Longshore to keep it a 14-3 game. Now back to our ESPN2 game in Clara. Thank you, Linda. This would be disastrous if Kentucky allowed South Carolina to make it happen. It's a third and 24. Gamecocks need a bunch, and they're looking for it. Almost. They almost got it. Corey Boyd thought he was interfered with. He was close to first down yard. Yeah, try to get the matchup they wanted out there with a linebacker. He's on Wesley Woodyard out in space, and Savelle Newton saw it. Boy, I tell you, Steve Spurrier is excellent at formationing you to the matchup that he likes. And almost came up with a big play was Corey Boyd for South Carolina, but Kentucky, the shot in the arm they needed, they're going to have excellent field position with a lot of time left in this football game. Stay tuned, because this one should be a fantastic finish. Ryan Sucka will come on and kick it away. Sophomore from Hickory, North Carolina. He's been excellent so far this year. That one wasn't excellent. And it'll be good field position for the Kentucky Wildcats trying to build on their last drive, which resulted in a touchdown. Just a 32-yard punt for Suckup. And great field position for Rich Brooks and the Kentucky Wildcats. Well, Wesley <laughs> Hitting them in the mouth. He talks about that a lot. <laughs> Hitting them in the mouth. He's a physical, physical football player. Came to Kentucky as a strong safety, but moved to outside linebacker and has been there the last two two seasons. He struck seven people so far today. He's got seven times. <laughs> Who are you growing up, Andre? I don't know. Give me a minute. I don't think about that. Okay. Growing up down there in Dickinson, Texas. Yep. Raphael Little back in the game behind Andre Woodson. Wildcats trying to make it two for two in scoring drop. Little flare, get it out. There is Dickie Lyons. Right. I'll tell you, the, the difference in Andre Woodson and a lot of college quarterbacks, they try to play three deep zone to the wide side and then two deep to the short side of the field. And, and it's a, it's called four Cleo or four cloud. And then you, they don't expect, defensive coordinators do not expect college quarterbacks to be able to throw the out way to the other side of the field. Andre Woodson can make every throw. Second down and three. I hope you're still thinking about who you were growing up. Franco Harris. No. Oh. That was a running back, number 32. Little with the carry. And Raphael Little. Close to first down yards. It should have been your rival, though. You're growing up close to Houston, I was Texas. A, I the was Pittsburgh, a Pittsburgh Steelers, Steelers are a big one. fan, and all my buddies hated me for it. And I, I got to brag in the end because they always close the deal. Always. Terry Bradshaw, Lynn Swan, Benny Cunningham. I got a chance to meet him at a golf tournament in Las Vegas. Benny Cunningham, big fan of Benny. No love you blue? No love you blue for me. <laughs> that was black and gold. Absolutely. We're going to have a measurement here. All right, let's talk about Andre Woodson. I know you're very high on the guy. He yeah. said something to me that was interesting. He said he's always watched film, yeah. but until 
this year he never knew how to watch film. What did he mean by that? Well, there's ways. When you watch film, a lot of kids, you know, they go in the film room, they turn it on, and you see what another team's doing defensively. Yeah, they play, you know, two deep zone, three deep, whatever it is. And then you go out and you play and you try to execute. You play. No, he's in the film room looking for tendencies of a defense. He's looking for body positions that allow him whatever plays called against a certain defense, you can sort it out in your pre-snap read. A guy is playing shaded inside. You can get an outside release and I can make an out throw right now. Things that help him coming into a football game. Third and inches. If the big quarterback calls his own number. No, little option action. Toss it out to Little. And Little the first down and more stays in bounds. Lowers the head and gets to the 20-yard line. Well, he's the fast back for Kentucky. Tony Dixon provides the wiggle, but just get him out on the edge. They collapse everything down inside. And his fullback, John Connor, leads him around the outside right there. Put your head down, protect the football. Kentucky trying to get themselves back into this football game. Nine rushes, 51 yards for Little. That was a 20-yard game. The junior from Anderson, South Carolina. Out of the game, Tony Dixon. Well, I like that matchup outside. Just one on one, Keenan Burton. Outside, one on one. Stay on the ground. Dixon struggles to get back to the line of scrimmage. Don't be surprised if they don't come back to that. Maybe the same formation, and then they've got the one-on-one -on -one coverage. Keenan Burton is begging Randy Sanders, the quarterback coach, you know, to, to come to him with the football. He's got a little mismatch with. Uh, one of the DBs from South Carolina over there. He's a big body, 6'2", 195 pounds, trying to match him up in space. Second down and 11. Two receivers to both sides. Woodson out of the gun. Flips it back left side. Curtis Pulley. And Pulley, using Burton's block, goes around the left side, loses the football. It's going to stay with Kentucky, but a big gainer. Watch, watch the throw. The throw is what wins, what makes the play. Right here, watch the throw. It's clouded vision. You've got tremendous pressure from Ryan Brown, the defensive end, and you got to throw through his body in order to get the football out to Curtis Pulley, a tremendous athlete who they just have to get on the field. Talk about coming out of spring practice. He was the starting quarterback. They had to get both of them on the field. Andre Woodson wound up winning the position at quarterback, and now Pulley is the guy making plays at wide receiver. And they say he rarely practices at wide receiver, so all the more remarkable. Yeah. He knows the position just based on playing the position of quarterback, so he knows where everyone should be on the football field. Woodson. That play was disaster from yeah. the get-go. Got to get out of that. It, it, Ryan Brown came in, busted that play up. Let's check in with Linda Cohn for a Sports Center in-game update. All right, Eric, all good things come to an end for Duke. I'm not talking about their 12-game losing streak. I'm talking about their lead over Alabama. John Parker Wilson with Keith Brown, nine-yard touchdown pass. The Crimson Tide on top of winless Duke, 16-14 to 14 in the third. And we'll have a new number two when the polls come out tomorrow. Auburn stunned by Arkansas in case you missed it. Next Saturday on ESPN, it's Auburn against Florida. ESPN full circle coverage. Can't wait. Well, Auburn could get it two weeks in a row. And the Florida Gators could go right in there and take care of business again. This is Curtis Pulley with the football. Hands it to Michael Strickland, who throws it. And the left-hander almost has his pass intercepted. Uh, here we go with that trickery again. And, you know, you're down here, execute your offense. If You know what? That tells me that you don't believe in what you're doing structurally on the offensive side of the football when you got to do all this trick plays and have guys come in and throw plays. Just execute the offense. you got one of the final passers in the entire country, and Andre Woodson understands your offense and can execute it to a T. This, I, I don't know why. And they threw to, they gave the ball to Michael Strickland, who's just a freshman, doesn't get on the field very frequently, and they ask him to make a big play. They did a good job just getting rid of the football, because that sack there would have been disastrous. All the way back in the 13-yard line. Third down and goal.
Robertson with time. Pass is high, incomplete. Looking for Keenan Burton. Well, here's a situation you're going to need a field goal anyway. A lot of time, a full quarter and two minutes into this one. But right here, just over the outstretched hands of Keenan Burton. So Woodson goes to the sideline. He's replaced by the kicker for the Wildcats, Lonis Sieber, who hasn't gotten much activity so far this year. He is just two for three on the year. Longest field goal is 41 yards. This will be a 31-yarder. And Sieber splits the upright. So back-to-back -back possessions result in scores for Kentucky. A touchdown last go around and a field goal off the foot of Sieber to make it a seven-point lead for South Carolina. So Rich Brooks has to be happy. His team goes nine plays, 35 yards, and they get a field goal. So they get something, and they're right back in it. It's a one-possession game. Well, I tell you, they, they needed that. They got to have a big stop now defensively, and you stay in that aggressive mode if you're Mike Archer, the defensive coordinator. Former LSU head coach, won one SEC title there as a head coach of the LSU Tigers. And, well, he really, really understands defense. He's, he's had success against Spurrier-led offensive teams. So right now, don't don't go to that deep zone stuff because Savelle Newton, it's not like, you know, you got one of those old Spurrier quarterbacks. This is a guy that can make plays pulling the football down and would like you to, to take deep drops with no pass rush. And we're talking history here. Steve Spurrier has never lost to the University of Kentucky. Yeah. He's 13 and 0. And trust me, this is a little too close for comfort for that man, Steve Spurrier. He he usually likes two or three point, two or three score cushion. And then he'll start to run the football late in the football game. He's got to stay well within his game plan right now. As they kicks it off in the direction of Captain Munderland, and he's going to take it out of the end zone. Little stutter step. They say he's got speed. Still on his feet, flagged down, and he's thrown out of bounds rudely. Well, I'll tell you, Kentucky getting physical on the football field. Micah Johnson is the one who grabbed him with one hand and threw him out of bounds. This is usually one of those block in the backs. Guy changes direction, starts to one side of the field, and then reverses field. You get that good old block in the back. During the return, illegal block in the back, number 20, return team, the penalty is declined. Illegal block in the back, number 53, the penalty will be enforced, half the distance to the goal, first down. We'll talk about just a, a roller coaster. South Carolina, they could do no wrong yeah. in the first half and then the first couple of minutes of the third quarter, but lately it's been all downhill for Spurrier's bunch. I tell you, the momentum in this football game has changed tremendously, and the crowd feels it. This Kentucky Wildcat football team feels it. They've got South Carolina starting on their own 10-yard line where you can really play some aggressive football, man-to-man -man coverage, come after the quarterback. I mean, I just make Savelle Newton meet me with his arm, not allow him to pull the football down and have huge running lanes to run through. Newton to throw. Under duress. Spun down after a pickup of a yard. Let's go back to the studio where Linda Cohen has a Sports Center in-game update. You know, is Cal ready to end USC's reign in the Pac-10? Well, ask Oregon. The Ducks are getting pummeled by Cal. This game on ABC. Marshawn Lynch ranked 14th in the nation in rushing, a 30-yard run, down to the one, and then Nate Longshore, the quarterback, punches it in. Longshore, he runs for a TD, throws for two others. It's 21-3 Cal. Wow. Cal Bears making a little bit of a statement. This is a surprise. Cal has gotten the ship righted in the, the correct direction, and they, they are going to have a fantastic finish to their season. Newton flips it out. Flag flies. Kenny McKinley with the football and goes out of bounds. Our flag comes down. 
And this is where he, he comes up. It may be an illegal pick here, trying to get the football out to, uh, to Kenny McKinley. And I think Savelle Newton is pleading his case. Yeah, pass interference on the offense. And we'll show it to you. It's going to come right into your screen, just the illegal pick. You got two receivers out here. They're setting an illegal pick right there, holding on the, on the defender that was actually covering Kenny McKinley. Pass interference, offense number 15. Half the distance to the goal. It remains second down. Andre, as a quarterback, is there anything that Savelle Newton can do to try and get everyone's brain back into this game? Yeah, you got to settle, settle them down in the huddle and just tell them that you assure them that everything's going to be okay, that you got things handled, that let's just go out and execute, get back to what we were doing early in this football game, and it's on him, it's on his shoulder to settle everybody down and make them believe. five-yard line, second and 14. Newton in trouble. Gets it out, complete to the tight end, Jared Cook. And he's dropped at the 11-yard line. Pick up a four. Still, and that's really all you're looking for. You want to get yourself in a position to convert on third down. A little breathing room down here. You don't want to turn the football over. I'll tell you what. Steve Spurrier, for a guy that has only been playing quarterback three games for him, he's got a lot of confidence to raise up and throw the football and allow him to execute the passing game with this kind of field position. And with the end of the quarter, Spurrier is going to have some time to ruminate, to think about what he wants to do on a pivotal third and eight. The fourth quarter is next. This game's starting to heat up a bit here at Commonwealth Stadium. We will come out on top. we got 15 minutes to find out. It's always fun splashing that water around. All right, the story here, South Carolina on top of Kentucky, 17-10. But that score a little bit deceiving. The Gamecocks not so cocky right now as they are on the ropes. The Kentucky Wildcats have scored the last 10 points in this game, and they're trying to get the football back. It's third down and nine for South Carolina. Boy, Mike Arthur trying not to show his hand early, and they bring the blitz. Newton under fire, throws it to no one in particular. Tried to get it to Boyd, nobody home. They tried to set up a screen to Corey Boyd, and they felt the blitz was coming. Wesley Woodyard, the outside linebacker. And Boyd actually runs into the official right here, which trips him up. And that one looked like it had a chance had he been able to catch the football. He was out in front. But Micah Johnson, the middle linebacker for Kentucky, may have been able to turn it up and go the, at least get the first down. But Kentucky going to have some outstanding field position. Steve Spurrier's cock and fire offense, shooting blanks. Ryan Sucka with the kick. Chases Raphael Little deep. He's a good one. Little spins across the 45. Well, right, you'll see the, the last drive, which started with the fake punt. Tim Matz, the, the punter, right here, just going to fake it. They're able to pick up the first down, and this was the big momentum swing that Kentucky needed. The late hit out of bounds added 15 yards to that, and then the big quarterback rumbling into the end zone, Andre Woodson. And now we stand at 17-10 early here in the fourth quarter. Talk about a roll reversal. These two teams... South Carolina on top in the first half. Two totally different football games. Kentucky Wildcats making it happen in the second half. Both teams still with big dreams in the SEC East for 2006. Little with the carry. Close to first down yards, a pickup of eight, maybe nine. Let's go back to Linda Cohn for a primetime pulse. All right, Eric, you guys got a great game over on ESPN2, but as we get the primetime pulse, as we look around in our family and networks, we see Tennessee and Georgia over on ESPN. Georgia with a 10-point lead trying to hold off Tennessee. And over at ABC, Cal is just blowing out Oregon 28-3. Stunning stuff. Back to you guys. Linda, thank you so much. We're just getting started here in the fourth quarter. It's a second down and two. Andre Woodson looks calm as a cucumber now. Yeah, I mean, you know, it, it's been a tremendous momentum swing. Guys are starting to make plays for him. Having a little success in the running game. Not there. Little is dropped by Jordan Lindsay. There's Lindsay, the junior from Mobile. 
Loss of two. I like the commitment to it, though. We're going to run the football, come at you. We're not afraid to be physical up front. You know, watching that big offensive line for Kentucky, they move well together as a unit. And they protect the passer. He got a little heat early in this football game, but they've settled in, made some adjustments at halftime, and provided Andre Woodson with a great deal of, of time to throw the football. They're down in three. Trying to pull South Carolina offside. They're going to try and get it on the ground, and Little is going to be stopped short. Well, Kentucky's defense will be playing shorthanded the rest of the way. Todd, what's going on? Yeah, exactly right, Eric. The way they've been playing, though, this might not be such a big setback, but it could be a big problem down the line. Their star defensive tackle, Lamar Mills, the senior from Slidell, Louisiana, he went out at halftime. They had to x-ray his shoulder. It is revealed that x-rays were negative. They were negative, but it has revealed an AC sprain. Unfortunately, he is done for the night. Yeah, he's their captain on the defensive side of the football. Tremendous leadership from the senior, Lamar Mills. Fourth down has been no problem for the Cats so far today. They're two for two in fourth down conversions. Woodson flips it out. It's Little, and he's got the first down. Right. And a flag comes down late to boot. Don't get a little face mask to go along with that, but every time, two out of three times that they've gone for it, or, or a short yardage situation is where it's been Close. They've gone outside, chose to go outside. So Raphael Little, excuse me. This, yeah, Raphael Little here, and you'll see the face mask right there. Just enough of it. It's the five yarder, Stony Woodson, the free safety coming up and run support. Just gets enough of the face mask to grab the attention, the attention of the official. So Kentucky there now three for three in fourth down conversion. been the workhorse. Now carried the football 13 times for Kentucky. Make it 14 times. Yep, this one's coming back. It's going to be a 10-yard penalty on the right tackle, Michael Aitchison. And he, he just did not let go fast enough. Big number 72 on the end, end, end of the line of scrimmage. Holding offense, number 72. Ten-yard penalty from the previous spot. Remains first down. They always say no, yeah, don't they? He didn't, he didn't agree with that <laughs> I call. didn't do it. I let him go. <laughs> I saw it from way up here. You'll see it as well. Right there, you got to let him go. Once he starts to disengage, your hands have to come free. I'll tell you, split second sooner, and he may not have gotten that call. Casper Brinkley is the man who was engaged with Aitchison. Brinkley is the twin of Jasper Brinkley. Two starters on the defense for South Carolina. Now this kind of, you'll see a lot of teams around college football that come to the line of scrimmage and then they act as if they're going to snap the football and then look over at the coach. To me, that changes the tempo. It takes you out of rhythm. See, they're doing it here. That just they takes it hurt. out of rhythm. Yeah, they and, better and hurt. It just, it just disrupts everything. I, I mean, when you call a play, allow the quarterback. If he doesn't like it, put it on him to get you out of a play. Don't always look to the sideline. Now you got the entire offense. Offensive linemen are looking over there. Just disrupts everything. Almost had a penalty because of a lot of machinations and looking to the sideline. Yeah, I just believe, you know, when you call a play at the line of scrimmage, it's, you take a, a lot out of the hands of a quarterback, and he has the better feel for the game than anybody on the entire field. Allow him to check into something that he wants to run. Just too much of that looking to the sideline and getting a play from the coach. Just too much involvement at that point. Had to use the timeout to avoid the delayed game. I should kind of show the team who the leader is. Woodson, with time, steps up and goes down. He's trying to run a pattern along the sideline, little wheel route with Dickie Lyons, and it just took extreme too long to develop. And he just, Andre Woodson, ran out of time. Eric Norwood first man to grab Woodson Jasper Brinkley cleaned up second and 21 South Carolina bringing the house they've 
everybody crowded around the line of scrimmage. Woodson fires a laser that is high, incomplete, looking for Steve Johnson. Boy, and Steve Johnson did a good job of pushing coverage off and then hooking up, and right on time was Andre Woodson, but he had someone in his face. Really couldn't follow through with this football. He's got a tremendous pass rush from South Carolina, and right there, he throws it inside. Steve Jacks Johnson hooks up outside and unable to come up with a, with a reception. It looks like Johnson may have gotten away with a little bit of a push with the left hand. It's only speeding if you get pulled yeah, over. That's right. Woodson now 13 of 24 for 155 yards. He's thrown an interception and he's yet to throw a touchdown. He has run for one, however. Third and 21. They get it out. Jacob Tammy. And maybe they're in manageable field goal range, but... This is what I felt like they should have done on first down. Just throw something underneath, try to get some of it back, and then second down, you try to get a little bit more where you at least get to third down and seven, third down and eight, where you can convert there and, and maybe even provide better field goal position for your kicker. And we'll see here if this uh, if this is enough, indeed enough room. Bonus Seaver. Made one from 31. This would be his longest make of the year. Coming into this game, it was 41 yards. This kick, the 45-yarder, and it's no good. Misses right and maybe a little bit short. So the Gamecocks, they hold on. Kentucky Wildcats knocking on the door, and they got pushed backwards and out. We're here in the Bluegrass State, one of four states that are actually Commonwealths. Kentucky Wildcats stubbed their toe just a moment ago. They had everything going their way, but then Rich's, Rich Brooks' team had a couple negative plays and they miss a field goal. And Steve Spurrier and the Gamecocks are still up by seven. They take over, ball in the 27-yard line. Savelle Newton trying to get something going. Keeps it himself, and Newton is crushed. Yeah, and that's what you got to do. Every time he pulls it down, you want to have somebody put their hat on him and put it on him with a little bit of force behind it. Wesley Woodyard, the leader on the defense, stepping up and making some plays for Kentucky. And they've got to do a better job. They've done a fabulous job in the second half of containing Savelle Newton when he pulls the football down to run with it. Once again, it's totally been a roller coaster ride. South Carolina dominating the first half offensively. Kentucky dominating South Carolina in the second half. Newton keeps it. Wants to throw. Flips it out to Boyd. And Boyd, the first down and more across the 45-yard line. What a nice touch on the football by Savelle Newton. It's just a nice little short roll, and he's going to catch Boyd right there in the flat. Right there, just nice turn of the shoulders and throwing a nice catchable football out to his running back, Corey Boyd. Boy, when they get him out in space, he is dangerous. Both guys, Newton and Boyd. Scored a 15-yard gain for Boyd, the junior from Orange, New Jersey. South Carolina, one and two in the SEC East. Boyd brought down by Ventrell Jenkins after a gain of two. And we called his name a few times, came into this football game with four tackles. Mention the fact he's from Columbia, South Carolina, where the University of South Carolina is located. Hometown guy gets way up here to Kentucky. Played himself one heck of a football game. And Jenkins being forced to play a little bit more than he normally does because yeah. Lamar Mills, as Todd told us a moment ago, out for the rest of the game. A lot of injuries. Corey Peters was out. Ricky Abram, the other guy was out with a wrist. Peters with a knee. Right, no depth on that defensive line for Kentucky. Newton throws it, passes complete. You know, Steve Spurrier recognizes how he can use Savelle Newton. Rolling him out the play a couple plays before to Corey Boyd, hitting him in the flat, then rolling him right. He's a lot more comfortable throwing the football when he's moving as opposed to just straight dropping. And you know what? It takes a little bit. You know, the good coaches figure that stuff out. I'm not going to force my system on him. 
but uh, allow him to work. I'll figure out what he does best to help us win football games and let him go. Third down and two. Just or, saw a shot of Sidney yeah, Rice, number quiet, four. Quiet tonight. He has just one catch. Been quiet the last two weeks. Boy, first down yard. Lowers the head and gets across the 45-yard line. Rice, I mean, he erupted against Wolf with five touchdown receptions, and he really hasn't had one since. Last week against Auburn was quiet in that football game. We talked about it. They threw him three jump balls. Auburn came up with one, and then the other two were batted away. He never really came came out of that football game. It didn't do anything that, that really registered on the radar. And the same thing in this ball game. He's got five touchdowns on the year. One, all of them in one game. All of them in one game. It's hard to do, actually. <laughs> Newton takes it on first down, and Newton, good, strong running. Finally brought down by Wesley Woodyard. Boy, Steve Spurrier, we talked about it. He got a lead, and now he's gone to the ground game behind that big offensive line, young offensive line, and just kind of trying to ground things out, Corey Boyd. and. Savelle Newton, see the rushing there. 74 yard, yards for Boyd and 73 for Newton. Now you normally didn't see that graphic when Spurrier was down in Florida. No. He had Emmett Smith and Shane Matthews. It's especially not a quarterback yeah. on that screen. No, no, no. That's one of your lead rushers. Uh, Shane Matthews wasn't running as many yards as Emmett Smith was. Or uh -huh. Eric Rett or those guys. Second down at four. Boyd with the carry, and Boyd gets it up for another first down before he's brought down. All right, Thomas Coleman getting tremendous push up front, and, and now if they continue to get that kind of push from the offensive line, I don't know if we'll see another football go in the air for South Carolina. Spurrier, as much as you talk about the fun and gun and, and all this passing that he, that he does, he will wear you down late in football games, running the football with a lead. And right now, he's pretty much turned this game over to the offensive line until Kentucky proves that they're going to be able to stop him. Don't look now, but as Yogi Berra would say, it's getting late early. It's just <laughs> under six minutes left to go in this game, and a score here, and it's a difficult situation for Kentucky. Big fella, boy. Barrels down. He gets close to the 25-yard line. Kentucky has two timeouts left, so they can stop the clock. We've got an injured player down. It's not one of the... They've got enough defensive line problems to have another lineman go down. That's Myron Pryor, the sophomore from Louisville, who's had such a fantastic sophomore season down in pain. Todd, what's going on down in the field? Well, Andre hit it just right. This is not the position they need to get thin at, and you might not find a more athletic cat on this squad. This is Myron Pryor holding his left elbow, and you want strong. This guy squats a team best 700 pounds. Runs a very respectable 4-8-40 for the big fella. 6-1, 300-pound frame. Yeah, and he's just a sophomore, and that goes back to that recruiting that we talked about. Getting better, the better caliber athletes at the University of Kentucky. Now Rich Brooks is able to recruit a better breed of athlete, and I think it's just a matter of time. A lot of young talent on this football team. It's just going to take some growing pains, and, and they're going to have to grow up a little faster than they want them to. Yeah, the Louisville Cardinals, Bobby Petrino's doing great things just down the road. But there's still some good athletes here in the Bluegrass State, and Rich Brooks is doing a good job of bringing them here. We talked about the fact that he has the Mr. Football in Kentucky in 2004 and in 2005 on this year's roster. So they're starting to get athletic, both offensively and defensively. Well, Georgia is in the red zone against Tennessee. You can tune to ESPN to see the result. This is the fourth year now for Rich Brooks, and I do think that that maybe he underestimated or just didn't understand how difficult the SEC is and how bare the cupboard was when he came in here. Well, replacing it, was, Guy Moore. it was bare in a probationary period. And I tell you, you know, he, he's done a fabulous job. Andre Woodson is a terrific talent. He's got a couple of good running backs in Little and Dixon. And he's got some players on the uh, defensive side. Micah Johnson is a, was highly recruited. Mr. You know, football for Kentucky in, in 2005. You mentioned that. 
A lot of young talent. There's Mike Archer, the defensive coordinator. We talked to him a couple of days ago. He said he didn't realize it, but he looked down a week ago against Central Michigan, and seven of the 11 players at one point on the game were either redshirt freshmen or true freshmen on the field. Seven freshmen on the defense. Wow. Second down at seven. Under pressure, Newton dumps it off. Corey Boyd, again, showing such good strength. Right, you, you think Newton is all run, and, and you're mis sadly mistaken. I mean, eyes are always down the field, and he is looking to throw before he runs. And right there, knowing exactly where his check down was, and Corey Boyd finds him along the sideline as he's scrambling around. And you know what? Just flick it to him and let him make a play for you. Big play. Tenth play this drive. have some man-to-man -man coverage across the board and look for him to maybe go to Sidney Rice since he's been so quiet in this ball game. In South Carolina, they want to talk it over. Third down and two, this could be the ball. That'd be the first time he's ever conserved. Well, he, he's wanting touchdown. to get out of here with a win, trust me. And maybe you, you've been pounding Corey Boyd running the football and they haven't stopped you. I think you give him another dose of it. Mo Brown in motion. They give it to Boyd. And Boyd looks like he wants to throw it. Oh, man, what are they doing? McKinley wants to throw the football. This is not conservative. It's a touchdown. Wow. Are you kidding me? Well, they gave you Corey Boyd, but it's they forgot to tell you Kenny McKinley was going to get involved and throw a touchdown pass to Savelle Newton. The converted receiver, Savelle Newton. And, to, and in his background, Kenny McKinley was a high school quarterback and felt he, you know, he, he coming in, that uh, he would better have a better chance of playing sooner and a little bit more if he moved to wide receiver and he threw a strike to the former wide receiver, <laughs> Savelle Newton. And wow. the point is, never try and read the mind of Steve Spurrier. You can't figure out what's going on between those ears. Boy, Kentucky sold out on the run just like we thought Corey Boyd oh would carry the football. 10 play, 73 yard drive, five minutes and six seconds elapsed off the clock. Touchdown pass, McKinley to Newton. Well, take a look at it. You're gonna have Corey Boyd right in, he, right in here. He's gonna hand the football off to McKinley, who's gonna throw to his quarterback way back over here. And you see it right here, just wide open, and the football's just gonna come right down to to his quarterback, Savelle Newton, in the corner of the end zone. A nice throw, and it was timed just right. I'll tell you what, nothing conservative <laughs> about that. How about that? Throwing back to the quarterback, who, you, who was a receiver four weeks ago. Why not? You only go around once. He's got a receiver, at a quarterback, a former quarterback at wide receiver, and a quarterback who used to be a receiver. If you can sort that out, let me know. <laughs> <laughs> Gives you a lot of options, I guess. <laughs> Savelle Newton, 22-yard touchdown catch, and the beat continues for their senior quarterback. Since he's been put into that starting lineup, their offense has just totally gone into a different gear. Well, that's fun for the players, too, when you have a coach that'll take chances like that. I mean, because it could have been disastrous. Kentucky comes up with an interception, goes down, ties the football game up, but you make it awfully hard to dig, dig yourself out of that hole when you score like that. Got to be in it to win it. Someone told me that before. Yeah. Rich Brooks not too happy as he prowls that sideline. Oh. Showing it right there. As a coach, is it works to have that type of thing happen on a trick play or just have it run just, down your throat? Just to have it happen, I, I think it's worse almost. If, if it happens at all, it's bad. But just having it run down your throat is even worse. Keenan Burton, electric returner. Gets out close to the 30-yard line, and a flag flies late. And they're going to have an extremely long field, Kentucky. Another one of those blocking the back. Now they're going to block in the back. Number 81, receiving team. 
15 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. So that'll march the Wildcats back a bit. Let's check in with Linda Cohn for a Sports Center in game update. Eric, great showdown in the SEC. Georgia, Tennessee over on ESPN. Joe Terezinski picked off by Antoine Stewart. Now the ensuing drive by Tennessee, Eric Ainge comes through with his first rushing touchdown, punching it in, making a three point game, but then Georgia added a field goal, so it's a five point game. Thank you so much, Linda. Wildcats on first down. Woodson has to run for his life. And he is thundered down at about the 21-yard line. Woodson's got to get a better, better sense of where he is on the field and how much time he has because he's just kind of pulling up. And guys are coming full speed, and he's just taking some unnecessary punishment. Get yourself on the ground and get to the line of scrimmage and run a play. Need to hurry. Woodson. Batted away, and a flag fly. Looking for Raphael Little, but I think he was grabbed. Rodney Polk is the guy, number 45, just grabbed a hold of Raphael Little, and that was the third receiver in the progression for Andre Woodson, sorting things out. Pass interference, defense, number 45. Penalty will be placed at the spot of the foul, automatic first down. All right, Andre, you had some heavy praise for the quarterback for Kentucky at the beginning of this game. You yeah. said Woodson's the best quarterback you've seen. What does he need to work on in his remaining year and a half of eligibility as a collegiate? Well, you know, fundamentally, he is very well put together, and he throws a nice ball. He's just got to have time to throw the ball, and he's got to have guys that are going to make plays for him. I thought he, he's played a, a pretty good football game of getting the football out on time. He's just got to have guys make plays for him. Slip it to Burton. Burton drops, and a flag flies again. I think he has a good understanding of what they do offensively. Holding offense number 78, 10-yard penalty from the previous spot. It remains first down. But you, I, or Andre Woodson can't control stuff that happens like that. See it right there in the center of your screen, 78. Guy goes by you. You're setting the screen. You, you can't can't grab a hole in the you know from from behind. So now Christian Johnson is going to leave the field for this play. They're playing this play without their starting left guard. Pocket holds up, and Woodson completes the pass to Burton. And you see the talent on a play like that. I mean, just a nice flick of the wrist. He keeps the football high. It comes out on time. And he can make every throw on the football field. Number 52, Fatu Turi Turi. The senior is now in at left guard in place of Christian Johnson. Woodson wants a bundle, has a man! Dickie Lyons down to the 10-yard line. Now you're challenging the defense. You've got a quarterback with a big-time arm. And we just talked about it could make every throw, and that was from the far hash all the way down the sideline on the other side of the field to Dickey Lyons. You see him right here. A lot of quarterbacks in college cannot make that throw, and that's beating the free safety with the football. Dickey Lyons right there. Nice grab. Getting his football team down inside the 10-yard line. He is their big play receiver. Talk about his speed. That's a 62-yard catch and run. Wildcats need to score quickly. They go to the end zone looking for Burton. Nothing doing. Well, that's a play right there when you like. You get that matchup. You get Carlos Thomas high over the top and you just throw it to the back shoulder of Keenan Burton and just let him turn around. Just throw it right, at the, right to his back shoulder and allow him to spin while the defensive back is continuing up the field. He's spinning away and if he grabs it, you're going to get a pass interference call or you're going to come up with a big time reception. We love that play down on this end of the field. Just a nice little fade stop to a big time receiver like Keenan Burton. Four in motion. Snap is low. Woodson. Touchdown. Lions. You gonna question his arm strength? The most fundamentally sound quarterback I have seen this season, Andre Woodson. Right here. Watch. Right here. You see the the receivers break apart, and now Dicky Lions in the end zone, and he's got to throw a strike because Carlos Thomas is trying to peel back and knock that football away. Now the seventh touchdown in four games for Dickie Lyons. 
Dickey Lyons wearing those gloves for a reason. That would have taken off a couple layers of skin. That ball had some revolutions on it. Touchdown number seven on the year for Lions, the sophomore from New Orleans. But more importantly, the Kentucky Wildcats within one score. On their ring of honor, they've got a Dickey Lions from 1966 to 68. That's his father. And the two Lions, they share the distinction of being the only father-son combo to ever have both caught an 80-yard pass in the NCAA. And I don't know about Dickey Lyons Sr., but Dickey Lyons Jr. can run. Yeah. Dad was an All-American, though. And son, I tell you, you can see the, the talent in, in Dickey right. Lyons Jr. I don't know about this onside kick. I think they got plenty of time, 256 and two timeouts left. How about this? Oh, they do try an onside kick it, and they've got a chance, but the ball goes out of bounds, and it'll go to South Carolina. So, what's the thinking there by going for the onside kick with 252 remaining? Sure. You got two timeouts, and there's plenty of time in the ball game. All you're doing is asking your defense. You can stop the clock twice, ask your defense for a stop, but they almost came up with this baby. Right here, it takes a nice hop right there, and then go up and grab the football. If you're David Jones, a wide receiver, got a little high for him, too. And Somebody got a paw on it to knock it out of bounds for South Carolina. Steve Ortmeyer, special teams coach, was once with the Raiders at one point in time. So South Carolina will start off almost exactly at midfield. What makes this significant, Steve Spurrier, should they choose to, they need to get about 20 yards, and then they're in field goal range. They have one of the better field goal kickers yeah, in the want, SEC, and Ryan Sucker. Clock has started. You don't want to rush up to the line of scrimmage if you're Savelle Newton. Just let it run down. Play clock's running. They have about 10 seconds left. You want to bleed that baby inside, well inside of 10 seconds before you snap the football. And this is where those new timing rules come into effect. You're able to bleed. Significant time off the clock. Well, that Boy, right there. Making it academic almost as he gets a big gainer on first down to move the sticks. A pick up a 14. Let's go back to Linda Cohn for a primetime pulse. Yep, king of our primetime polls. Good games on ESPN and ABC. ESPN, Tennessee within three again with under two minutes left in the third quarter against Georgia. Over in ABC, third quarter just underway. Cal at 28-3 lead. Nate Longshore, two touchdown passes. He ran in for another. Back to our game on ESPN2 with Eric and Andre. Linda, thank you so much. Well, boy, oh, boy. Corey Boyd is now over 100 yards after that 14-yard game. Look at this. Oh, man, refusing to go down. If you ask me what's worse, if you just stand in and get hit in the mouth and get hit by a trick play, that, that right there is punishment because you are rendered helpless. You can't stop him, and he's running downhill. The thing I like most about it is that he's got two hands on the football when he feels the contact coming. Right away, protecting the football is Corey Boyd. South Carolina hard to stop here with just over 140 left in this football game. Fans singing the blues right now in the Bluegrass State. Kentucky with two timeouts. They haven't been able to use them. Boy, this time. Now they'll take one. Good play by Lewis to hold him up. Dominic Lewis, the defensive end, allows Kentucky to take a timeout. That defensive line for Kentucky, they've just played a lot of snaps. We've talked about it. They missed two players, Peters and Abram, uh, with a knee and a wrist. They were out of the football game. They lost Lamar Mills in this football game. And Myron Pryor came up a little gimpy at one point. So it just a lot of plays from a young group and played a lot of plays defensively. So you get tired, and then you don't have the depth with guys to step in and, and help you out. And you get tired, and all of a sudden, you're starting to see it now. South Carolina running the football with Corey Boyd. They passed their way the, to this point and got a lead. Now they're going to sit on it with Corey Boyd and run it behind like their own, their young offensive line. Well, unless the Kentucky Wildcats can pull themselves up off the mat, they're going to fall to 3-3 three and three overall on the season and 1-2 and two in the SEC East. And both football teams needed this game. 
trying to stay bowl eligible and the schedule for either school doesn't get any easier, especially for Kentucky. It gets a little brutal. Yeah, the Kentucky Wildcats take a look at their remaining games. Yeah. Well, October 21st is their next game. I'm sorry, uh, October 14th. 14th. At, next at, week is the next game. They're going to be down to Baton Rouge to take on the LSU Tigers. They've also still got Georgia and Tennessee on the road. Well, all three of those schools on the road. And then for South Carolina, get Vanderbilt and Tennessee and Arkansas. And Arkansas playing pretty good football right now. And Boyd, another strong run. And a timeout is called. You know, that's why... Auburn's the perfect example of why you just play from week to week and you don't try to control what goes on in, in the world of college football. I really think what Tommy Tuberville said this week took his team, it, it made him unfo didn't allow him to focus today. He was They're talking. looking down the road, yeah, at the BCS and maybe trying to position himself for a, nas you know, a national championship and a spot, and, and it and really hurt him today. I really believe that. You see the, the standings there for the SEC East Division. Florida, Georgia, Kentucky now at 1-1, one one, South Carolina. This has not been updated. Should this score hold, the Kentucky Wildcats would fall to one, one and two. two. And yeah. South Carolina, they would jump on top of them. They'd be a 500 team in conference at two and two. But the team to beat, how about Chris Leak doing magic in his senior year yeah. down, in, down and, in Gainesville they playing have the Gators? One, they have one against Auburn next week. So the Auburn, like we mentioned earlier, they could get it two times on the chin. As a former elite quarterback, could you do what Chris Leak is doing and split time off and on with Tim Tebow? That's tough. And that, that is tough. You don't have any control over it if you're the player, but you would prefer to have one guy calling the signals, pulling the chain. I, I just believe in one quarterback system because the team identifies with who the leader on the football team is, and it's his team and on his shoulders. Just like Steve Spurrier came out this week and said, Savelle Newton is my guy. And all of a sudden, you see the confidence in him. He's walking, little shoulders, a little more upright. You're the guy. Man, you want to be told that. Boy, stoned. Good pop. Looked like Roger Williams came in to knock him down at the line of scrimmage. Braxton Kelly also in the mix. You know, and you play with just a little bit of apprehension because you're afraid to make a mistake. Boy, listen to that. But you're afraid to make a mistake if you're playing that two-quarterback system because you know you're coming out and the next guy's coming in if, and you just can't take chances and make a mistake and come back, play through the mistake. Now, is this a decision at all? It's fourth down and one. It's basically the clock's going to run down. There's probably going to be about 25 seconds on the game clock when Steve Spurrier takes a timeout. Should he kick a field goal or just run a play? I think he, well, I would line up and kick the field goal just to get the points on the board. If something happens, and, I, and he looks like he's rounding up the, the field goal unit. Something can go wrong. Bad snap. You never know what's going to happen. Yeah, but you know what? He's, he's going to talk about it. I don't think there's going to be enough time for Kentucky to get out there and maybe even clock the football because with the new rule changes, the clock will start immediately on the change of possession. Maybe you kneel it down and then take your chances that way. Tennessee is in the red zone against Georgia. You can tune to ESPN to see the results. Be interesting. You trying to figure out Steve Spurrier? <laughs> <laughs> we thought we had him figured out before. Keep playing this game. Right, Third down around. and a long two. Yeah. They're already up by seven. You think that maybe they're just going to kind of hang out and be conservative, kick a field goal with their fantastic kicker. But instead, a little bit of a flipper and they got a, a wide receiver and McKinley throwing to the quarterback. Newton in the end zone for a touchdown. And, never wow. know with Steve Spurrier. You never know. Neither team can stop the clock the rest of the way. If you kick the field goal here, it's pretty much a done deal. But if you get one yard, it's fourth down. Well, you get three yards. It's fourth and three. If you get the three yards, and, it's, and it's over, less of a risk, and the game is over. That looked like Ron Suckup is coming back out. They're going to keep the offensive unit here. So they're going to go for it. Fourth down and three. Yeah, get the offensive unit ready. Just go out and maybe spike the football. 
He didn't have a timeout, does he? have a timeout. That's going to put him back another five yards. That's what no, you get when you get an inexperienced five yard quarterback. Game penalty. You, you don't have a timeout. Now, the official's going to blow this thing. Which might be part of the plan. <laughs> no, I don't think so. With the, with the look of Spurrier's on that sideline, that wasn't by design. So now, a whole different ball game. Fourth and eight. You're not, you can't throw the ball and try and get the first down. Never know with Spurrier. He'll be ready, getting ready to take another delay of game. Yeah, game clock's here. grinding down. It's it's seven seconds and counting. Oh, they just get it off. And Newton takes it himself, breaks a tackle. And he is down. With the chains of possession, that'll stop the clock. That briefly. But Kentucky, they need to run out right now. And now you better have a play called if you're Kentucky. And I would be at the line of scrimmage, formation. And this is why I think I would have kicked the field goal because you just allow for him to, to have a chance. You hit a big one here, get out of bounds. It only takes a couple of seconds. Woodson escapes. Pass is complete to Burton. Looking for someone to flip it to. Get out of bounds, young man. Get out of bounds. In the open field. Gets a block. And Burton out of bounds. Nine ticks remaining. 38 yards on that catch and run. Yeah, and that change of possession, it can it messes with the offense, but you saw there that it confused South Carolina defensively as well. They were all out of position and allowed Kentucky a big play. And then you, now you're going to have maybe a shot, two shots at the line at the uh, at the end zone. They're lining up everybody left of the formation down here. Keep an eye on Kenny Burton. That's the guy they want to go to. Number 19. Woodson definitely has enough arm to get it to the end zone. This will be the final play of the game. And it is incomplete, and that'll do it. It was ragged at the end, but Steve Spurrier's Gamecocks, they hold on and pick up their fourth win of the season. Well, our final score, South Carolina 24, Kentucky 17. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. On behalf